States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as Rhonda Paulson, founder and executive director of the Isaiah 117 House, offers our invocation. God, you are a God of protection. We thank you for the protection we have seen just this week for Dale Jr. and his family, and we pray that same protection over every driver, pit crew member, first responder, and fan here tonight. God, you are a God of freedom. We thank you for the freedom we have to openly praise your name, and we thank you for every member of the armed forces, past, present, and future, that have fought for that freedom. God, you are a God of love and grace. Give us the strength and determination to be more like you, more loving, more gracious. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the Motor Racing Outreach kids celebrating their 20th anniversary singing at Bristol Motor Speedway. A very proud moment for the parents of those kids singing the national anthem 20 year anniversary for the MRO kids.
was a beautiful day The sun beat down I had the radio on I was driving Trees flew by Me and Del were singing Little runaway I was flying Energy Cup Series Racing from Bristol. Telecast presented by Wendy's. As we go into the last great Coliseum, let's go down trackside to Dave Burns. And Rick, something we know about Bristol is things can happen fast. Well, that same can be said for trying to make the playoffs on points. Just think about Jimmy Johnson. Five races ago was on a string of two top fives that put him in comfortably, but not comfortably enough. Since then, he's had troubles and now just sits outside the points of the points playoff cutoff line. He's got to bring it around tonight. The pressure's definitely on the seven-time champ, Marty. All day for drivers on the bubble. This is a nightmare race here at Bristol. I talked to Ryan Newman a moment ago. He said, there's so much out of your control at this race, and that's what worries him the most. But this is also a race where you can grind out a finish. In the spring, Newman and his team finished sixth. He told me, if we finish there, we'll be just fine, and we'll get out of Bristol in a very good points position, Parker. Marty, Kyle Busch has a series leading eight wins at Bristol. When I was talking to him earlier, I said, what's the focus tonight? He said, number nine, because it ties us for second on the all-time win list at Bristol with names like Dale Earnhardt, Cale Yarborough, and Rusty Wallace. He just had a bunch of fans down here yelling, let's go, Kyle, and he smiled and said, gave them a good thumbs up, Kelly. Well, Parker, as we say in Las Vegas, Denny Hamlin is on a heater. He's had five straight top five finishes, including a win, and this 11 team shows no signs of slowing down. Denny put the car on pole again yesterday, and his crew chief, Chris Gabehart, told me Denny is full of swagger tonight. Denny Hamlin looking for his second win here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Rutledge Wood, where are you? I'm atop the Mobile One Peacock pit box, and we actually just got a chance to see Denny Hamlin's daughter because they are celebrating 20 years of the MRO kids singing the national anthem here at Bristol. He just got a big hug from one of his daughters. But this is a tradition that's gone on since 99. You see Clint Boyer there, Kyle Larson, their kids are a part of it, uh, as well as so many others. That's Chase Elliott right there in the shot. But you look through the years, whether it's the Waltrips, one of the Burtons, Paige Burton was actually in there, Jeff Burton's daughter, Ford Martin, Tyler Bonney, both of the Latar kids. There have been so many children over the years that have been a part of this amazing tradition that, Rick, this was a really special moment for all the parents past and present here at Bristol Motor Speedway. It's a lot of fun and a great tradition that we hope continues for a very, very long time. So much success at this racetrack. We heard names like Dale Earnhardt, uh, guys that have had incredible success. Daryl Waltrip, so many wins at this racetrack. Well, the Bush brothers are getting into that elite ca category already. Kyle Busch with eight wins at this racetrack. Kurt Busch with six wins. The Bush brothers really are, are showing everyone that they know how to race here at the bull ring. And they've done it on every style of Bristol. The top, the bottom, the new car, the old car. We've seen it where you have to have new tires, old tires, pushing, shoving, beating, banging. What did Kurt say? I messed up. If I could have got to his bumper, I would have wrecked him last time they were here. That's why they're so good here, that aggression. Yeah, and Kyle, you heard Kyle saying they won't win number nine tonight to, you know, he, to tie some of the sports legends, guys like Kel Yarborough, some of the greatest drivers in the sport. You know, don't think they're not paying attention. Do not think that these guys right here, they want to dominate this race because they take pride. Every driver takes pride in being able to win at this racetrack. Rick, everybody asks what makes this place special. There's nothing else like it. Every circuit we go to is big and sprawling, one mile, two mile. This is a bull ring built on a mountaintop. If you can win here under the lights, 
it's unlike anything else. Definitely one of the most historic racetracks and one of the most coveted to try to win. It's time to fire the engine. So let's go trackside. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshals, legendary anglers Bill Dance and Johnny Morris, joined by Maddie Kelso from the Catch a Dream Foundation, NASCAR Hall of Fame car owner Richard Childress, Adam Putnam, CEO of Ducks Unlimited, Quality Air Management Association founder Joe Hamilton, Chad Franklin with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, and Michelle McCraw representing Tracker Off-Road. On behalf of the good folks at Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, and Tracker Off-Road, America's Night Race is very proudly dedicated to the sportsmen and women and future generations of conservationists in this great nation. Drivers, start your engines! It's called Thunder Valley for a reason. It's going to get loud. Stay with us. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Subway. Make it what you want. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Labonte inside of Earnhardt. He taps him. I like to beat Terry and uh, race him back, you know, side by side. Coming to the white flag, there's a leader change, and Labonte takes the lead. I was going to just try to shake him and get under. Oh! Didn't mean to really turn around, meant to rally his cage on He never has any intention on taking anybody out. It just happens that way. And it's the 20 year anniversary of that bump and rattle his cage. Hall of Famer, Texas Terry Labonte, is actually here in the crowd. Rutledge Wood talked to him earlier during Countdown to Green. What an unbelievable night that was. The crowd was crazy when that happened. And after the race, I mean, they stayed here forever. And I've never heard so many people booing Dale Earnhardt. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was crazy, the, the energy, the, the excitement. That's what Bristol is, though. You know it's action-packed when you have to label that Clash 2. Right. Because <laughs> five years earlier, it happened, and Labonte uh, slides across the line with the nose smashed off in Clash 1. You see him. Terry had to smile at me. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the starting grid brought to you by Wendy's. It'll go across the bottom of your screen. Denny Hamlin won the poll. Kyle Larson 
will make up row number one. And it's Smart Trunks Jr. and Kurt Busch in row two. Again, we talked about how good the Bush brothers are at this racetrack. Here come rolling Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott had a very fast car race yesterday. Matty D, Kevin Harvick. And some Penske teammates in row six. Logano, Blaney. Man, Blaney looked great in final practice. We'll see if as the groove moves around. We're going to talk about it all night. Top to bottom, see if that 12 car can stay on top of the handling. Back in row seven, you saw Brad Keselowski back there. Row eight, David Reagan, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. We want to chat with one of the Warriors about to go to battle on the racetrack. Eric Jones, driver of the 20. Let's see if we can dial him up. Hey, Eric, all the guys up in the booth, you got us? I uh, got you. All right, man, it's Bristol night race. What are you expecting? Man, it's, uh, it's always a little wild, right? You know, I think we're all as drivers pretty excited for this one. It's definitely my favorite race of the year. The time of the lights at Bristol, it really doesn't get any cooler than that, but that's going to be crazy to get up front, and I'm sure there's going to be some pushing and shoving guys that are coming and going, so hopefully we're one of the guys that uh, are coming all night. We'll be in good shape. Eric, we try really hard to explain to the fans how difficult this racetrack is, but what is the most difficult part of it? Uh, it's a combination of things, really. It's physical and it's, it's a rhythm track, so the physicality is obviously a tough part. 500 laps around this place is no easy task on you uh, physically, but mentally getting in that rhythm of getting around Bristol and not making a mistake and not getting heated up and fired up when somebody gets into you or you want to get back at them too early. So there's a lot of things you got to keep in check, but those are two of the big things for me that uh, make it get tough to get around a race here. Well, thank you for letting us ride along. Take a deep breath, man. 500 laps coming. And Eric Jones has looked very good. We're going to ride along with a few different drivers. Yeah, how about this view right here? Right on the front bumper of Ryan Priest, a Kroger onboard camera. He'll start back in the 12th row, 23rd position. Daniel Suarez got this helmet cam. Great shot tonight, Coca-Cola cam. And I love what Kevin Harvick's carrying. He has the roof camera, the Hunt Brothers pizza, but we also have a great shot of the driver himself. Shows the work they're putting in right here. You see that head lean against that headrest. 500 laps around the high banks. Martin Truex Jr. I don't know if this Bass Pro Shops Cabela cam will still be there when this <laughs> night's over. That's a dangerous place to put a camera at Bristol, but imagine the shots we're going to see from this. All right, Steve, take us through the race breakdown. Well, we always hear it. You have to race the racetrack first, even though you're, you know, it's filled with competitors. This track can reach out and bite you. Things happen very quickly. Just over a half a mile, 500 laps, 266 and a half total miles. Stages, as always, the first and the second stage, both 125 laps in length. That leaves a lengthy, a big bite at the apple, the final stage, 250 laps, and that's not a typo. 150 laps plus for fuel, and the tires can do it. We have seen green flag pit stops. We have seen 150 lap runs here before. Two by two, and what a great crowd on hand tonight. As again, the sun will go down, the lights are on, and for some reason, the night race here at Bristol just brings out the best in these drivers. They put on an incredible show. Denny Hamlin on a roll. As we heard earlier, Kelly said he's on a heater. He has been incredible. Already three wins this season. Everybody standing waiting for the start of this one. Denny Hamlin. Kyle Larson, Hamlin in the 11 on the outside. Kyle Larson in the 42 on the inside. They come out of turn four. Green flag is in the air, racing at Thunder Valley. Hamlin got a great launch, and then notice Truex Jr. He jumped immediately up on the outside of the 42 of Larson. A lot of confidence in that middle groove having grip early in this race. Oh, that bottom fired off that lap, though. Did you see Larson, how much ground he made up? There you go. You mentioned that front bumper cam for Martin Trex Jr. Look at the view this is going to give you. That bottom part of the racetrack, that's that traction compound he's in right now. That's why it's so dark. It's put there to try to improve the bottom of the racetrack. For years, that was the preferred line. Then it moved to the top to try to make the track even more racy and sprayed that stuff at the bottom. And Kyle Larson is using that bottom of the racetrack to run Denny Hamlin down. Already a great battle for the lead here. Denny Hamlin 
running a little bit higher than Kyle Larson was through the turn. And look at how close Denny Hamlin was to spinning that thing out. A very loose on corner energy. That's something that's not uncommon at this racetrack. And I think the drivers are surprised that there's that much grip in this bottom groove right now. Many times it takes a little while to get this activated, but clearly being in that dark compound, that traction compound is the place to be at the moment. That's going to change, though, during the night, don't you think, Steve? I think it's absolutely going to change. And the question is, can your car change with it? But right now, you see where Denny Hamlin's running? That is the Bristol of old. Wrap the apron. That car, that left front tire has to grind, has to work to make that car turn the middle. 15-second laps they're clicking off. Marty. Yeah, Rick, NASCAR actually does a friction test to kind of tell where the grip on the racetrack is. Kyle Larson in that grip right now. There's a traction compound on the bottom of the racetrack. And Steve, when they rated it this morning, when they ran across it to tell how much grip was down there, it rated at 110%. They've never had it that high. Amazing grip on that bottom lane. But as you mentioned, it will wear off tonight. And you're going to have to be adjusting your line all night long as a driver. You know, the problem with all that grip, Jeff, it's there till it's not. <laughs> and it will wear off. We see Kyle Busch right here already moved up four positions. He had that first car out in qualifying. Such a disadvantage. Jimmy right in front of him. Look at the patience of the veteran. 83 wins, seven championships. He knows what's on the line tonight, but you just have to stay in line. I mean, look in front of it. It's bumper cars. One at a time is all you can do. Everybody's lined up on the bottom, right? So what are you going to do? The only thing you can do is, you have to, as you mentioned, you have to be patient. You have to... Take your opportunities when you see it right there. See, Paul Menard lost the bottom a little bit. Jimmy Johnson immediately drove underneath him. That's Let him know that was going to be his spot. That's the peak and go. I'm not sure he was really there, but he peeks out. Paul Menard says, you know, I'm not going to race you this early. Go ahead. Now Kyle Busch having a little trouble getting by Paul Menard to finish that pass. There's Clint Boyer in the 14. The bottom definitely working tonight. Hamlin Larson, Truex Jr., Kurt Busch, Matt De Benedetto. In the top five, eight. Daniel Hemrick, a little moment here. Hey, Daniel Hemrick on the very bottom of the racetrack, trying to leave the corner with good speed and went to apply the throttle when the rear tires just did not have the grip he wanted. And look at the spots that cost him. Well, you mentioned it. Not only is it a very one groove racetrack around the bottom currently, but it's also 38 cars around a half a mile. That's Denny Hamlin already getting into lap traffic. Only 14 laps into the race. Traffic will be an issue all night. At this racetrack, Steve, if you're if you're Kyle Larson right now, one of the one of the things you're looking at, look at Denny Hamlin way up the racetrack. And fight for the lead, and Larson's going to take it away as Hamlin lost the bottom of the racetrack, and now Kyle Larson out front at Bristol. He went there intentionally. I saw him driving to turn three in that high lane, trying to see if that high lane was ready. Watch right here. So he's going to have to go around that lap car, and instead of going, instead of waiting and being patient and trying to pass him off turn four, turn four, he trusted that the outside was going to be ready, but it was not ready. Lucky not to make contact. And if you look at your bottom right, that's currently live. Now Kyle Larson up the hill with a little bit of the wiggle. Denny Hamlin back inside, but they're catching traffic. What are they going to do? It's the battle to traffic. That's exactly what it is. And Willie put the bumper to him early on. Only 18 laps into this race. And already the 42 of Kyle Larson has taken advantage of a mistake by Denny Hamlin. Now Hamlin fighting to get back up to the front. And here's what happens when traffic stacks up the leaders as Denny Hamlin's right on the bumper of Kyle Larson. Look at Martin Trex Jr. He's now in the picture. Only two or three car lengths back waiting for a bobble out of the front two. Kelly. But Denny Hamlin's been quiet on the radio so far, but in talking to his crew team, Chris Gamehart, they did a 40-lap plus run in happy hour practice, and they felt really good about an 11 minute car. One of the strengths was the maneuverability of it. Denny ran it low, he ran it high, and they felt good about it on all areas of this racetrack. You see what Denny Hammond did right there? When he went through one and two, Truex was behind him. So instead of jumping on the outside of that lap car, he just waited. He just checked everybody up and then passed him on corner exit. That way, Truex could not make the move, Marty. When we talk about Kyle Larson always running what, Jeff? The top of the racetrack. But Larson told me, I like the bottom here at Bristol. I can always run the top if I need to, but the bottom seems to work for the 42. But I think Jeff, among drivers, they want that top group to work. So that's why you see Denny Hamlin and his teammate Martin Truex Jr. up there trying to lay down some rubber. Well, the exit of it's starting to work really well. Watch Denny Hamlin. He gives up some speed on corner entry, but right here on the exit of turn four, not on two yet, but in turn four, it's starting to come in. See this move? 
right there. He's got that momentum. Larson knows he's there. He's going to have to give the spot up. Denny Hamlin got right to the side of the door there of the 42, not able to make the pass. Now he's got the momentum again. He's trying to make this high line work. He had the courage to be the first guy to go up there. He went up there and lost the lead by going there. But using the high line, he now is going to regain the lead. Denny Hamlin right beside Kyle Larson. And now the advantage Denny Hamlin has is a slow car, the 53 on the bottom. That's going to slow Kyle Larson down. Larson sees it coming. Let's see 11 go. Denny Hamlin out in front. Kyle Busch, he's got his hands full. Remember, he started back in 31st. He's fighting to stay in the top 25. Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Bristol Motor Speedway. Now, the official app of NASCAR puts race coverage and in-car cameras right at your fingertips. Search NASCAR in your app store, or you can visit nascar.com slash mobile and take a look at what's happening here for the lead. Denny Hamlin getting caught up in the lap traffic, and now the 42 of Kyle Larson trying to find a way around him again. Denny Hamlin. He has been exceptionally aggressive working his way through this lap traffic, been three wide, just doing whatever he can to never lose momentum. Well, and Denny Hamlin's teammate, Kyle Busch, had to start way at the back of the field after trouble in qualifying was the first car out. It didn't seem to work, and he had to work through this traffic, and business picked up. He's only a straightaway in front of the 11. You see on the right side of your screen, Jimmy Johnson, Paul Menard, and Kyle Busch. They were being patient earlier, but then they looked in their mirror and saw the leader on the same straightaway, and they were aggressive. Dave. Okay. Checking in on the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. He radioed on lap 14 that the car was really loose. And they started getting information on where guys were running. And I don't know, this would confuse me. He was told the leader's running the top, second place is running the bottom. Now, of course, he can't see how they're weaving it out, but Jimmy pretty much stuck to the bottom now. Parker? And Dave, Steve, you were talking about Kyle Busch and weaving his way through traffic. Adam Stevens told me, was able to oh, they're going side by side for the lead, but he told me one of the things that makes him so good here is his ability to get through traffic. Whoa, lead change. Lead change again, Kyle Larson able to take advantage of the 34 of Michael McDowell getting in front of the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Now Larson back out front. Steve, you said at the beginning of this race that slower cars were going to play a role in this race. And they always do. There's just nowhere to go. You can't hide. Even if you want to get out of the way of the leader, there's just no way to do it. So now Denny Hamlin continuing to run the high side around Bristol. Larson hugging the bottom of the racetrack. Oh, here we go. I love this shot. 
Coca-Cola. Helmet can with Daniel Suarez. He's working the bottom. See how loose he got right there? He just had to take the wheel out of it for just a moment. Why is this pass so difficult? See how he's able to gain on Alex Bowman getting in the corner? Goes to the throttle, but watch. Alex Bowman's going to pop back out. See, there he is on his right front. He just can't quite clear him. He's going to try to use this lap car as a pick. He's hoping that 77 stays up there, doesn't get too high, so he can use him as a pick to clear this, make this pass happen. There it was, that's how he got him. Now he went back to the top of the racetrack. These are decisions the drivers are gonna have to make all night long. Look how quick this happens. Yeah, how quickly we've already completed 44 laps on 45. And the 11 of Danny Hamlin has worked the top of the racetrack. Look at this run he gets right here. Every lap I watch him off turn four, he gets right to the rear bumper. This is what's going to get the 42 in trouble, though. If he commits to the bottom, he's going to get stuck in traffic. And like that, Denny Hamlin gets around on the outside. What a move. Denny Hamlin, the momentum off the turn. Rockets in front of the 42. Now Denny Hamlin out front again, and he tries to weave his way through traffic. Kyle Larson saw how quick Denny Hamlin rolled the middle of the corner in that top lane. And that's where he's going to try to go. Once he clears this traffic, you can bet that Kyle Larson is going to the top. Wait a minute. Do you ever clear traffic? Out here, it seems Briefly. like you're in traffic you'll all in, the time. Get in front of him for just a moment. Clear traffic. Ha, that made me laugh. Martin Shrex Jr. is all over the back bumper of Kyle Larson. How long will he be patient? Marty. Well, Larson right now loose, and this has just been outstanding racing between these three guys really battling for the lead between Hamlin, Larson, and Truex Jr. Riding on board with Truex Jr. And he just threw Cole Pern kind of a curveball, Steve. He said, hey, if I'm, when I'm on the bottom, I'm too tight on exit. But when I'm on the top, I'm too free on exit. And no, running the middle doesn't make it that much better. So how do you fix that kind of handling issue, Steve? Well, the bigger problem is how much is the track going to change? To your point, Marty, you're trying to fix very complicated handling issues, but you know the track's going to continue to change. Sometimes, just like the drivers have to be patient, the crew chiefs have to be patient. But how about Matty D here? Running in the fifth position, we saw him fast at practice, fast at qualifying. That can't shake him. That can't shake him, Burton. The man announced this week he won't be back in the 95 racing for everyone a job interview this guy is available next year who will pick him up parker and steve you know when he came out for his intros he had he was dressed like rocky balboa and that's how he views himself you know he's the underdog he's trying to go there underneath kurt bush but one thing he told me is he uses the bottom there is that he sets his car up for the bottom of this racetrack so that he can go where others aren't so that he can pass like he's trying to do on Kurt Busch there and then he says if I can do that I know I've always got the top to go to so he looks pretty good on the bottom right now Parker I love that approach I you know if if this bottom gives up it's going to be easier to run the top than the bottom but when the bottom is there and your car will let you do it there's way way faster to run the bottom and remember, Kurt Busch is a six-time winner at this racetrack. Matt DiBenedetto just went by him. He took fourth away. Hamlin, Larson, Truex Jr., DiBenedetto, and Kurt Busch, the top five.
62 laps completed. The Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol. This telecast presented by Wendy's. Now, Steve, I hear you're going to be moonlighting on Monday. What's going on? Monday, all day, me and the bag man, all day on Sirius NASCAR Radio. Sirius XM. I don't know who thought it was a good idea to put me on for the entire <laughs> show with Bagley, but it's going to be great. I always love calling in and talking with Bagley. They're going to have me on the whole time. Y'all call in and uh, ask him some hard yeah, questions. Call don't throw in. any softballs to him. Call, call in. I'm ready. This, this is what I love about Bristol. This, I mean, there's cars everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like you, like I said, it once you yeah. clear traffic, right? There's <laughs> never really going to clear traffic. It's just, it's just Bristol, man. There's nothing like it in the world. This car right here, Kevin Harvick. He did not get a great start. He was a little bit slow taking off, but now he is rolling. He is running down Chase Elliott. He's been running the bottom, been running the top. This car seems to me can run anywhere he wants to run it. Dave. When I talked to Kevin before the race, that's the idea that I got about his race car. Very, very confident about what the four could do today. Uh, wasn't so sure about the radio, though, a few laps ago. I believe it was interference. He just yelled across, the radio's not working. And then on Channel 2, they talked about interference. So. That could be a little striking at Bristol because here, oh, and troubles for Joey Logano. Logano diving down onto pit road to an issue with the 22. Definitely didn't need to come to pit road for fuel. And just reminding right, everyone, pit road very right unique front. here. He says he has a right front down. Looks like it's low on air. Under green, you only have to run the straightaway you're on. So Joey Logano will only pit on the front stretch. He won't have to run the entire pit road, but will still lose at least one, if not two laps. Here comes the leader, Danny Hamlin, on the front stretch. This will put the 22 one lap down. The change in left side tires, but remember, 15 seconds. The 11 is going to be right back on him here again. Oh, this, slow in the oh, left rear. No, this is going to cost him perhaps a whole nother lap. They have a problem over here on the left rear. Took a long time. And here comes the leader. That's another lap. That was Laps a down. costly mistake. Wow, let's see the smoke oh, out man. of the 21 car. I didn't think he expected the 22 to come across his nose like that. Locked the tires up to stay out of the way. And I'm going to tell you what all of this did as we watch that 22. Here comes Denny Hamlin right in front of this 21 car. You see Kyle Larson as well, just out in front of that 11. The 48 of Jimmy Johnson, the 18 of Kyle Busch. You see him, two cars up. Now, there's, you can't panic. Even if you lose one lap, you're still going to be OK. But you know Kyle Busch sees that 11 coming. There you go right here. Contact. Oh, the left, he locked the left front up trying to avoid the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Thought that smoke was contact, but it was a left front lockup. Denny Hamlin working his way through traffic, and now he's getting ready to put Bubba Wallace a lap down and closing in on the 18 of Kyle Busch as well. Kelly? Just confirmed with the 22 team of Joey Logano that there was a cut in the right front tire. That's what brought him to pit road right now being scored three laps down and, and pretty disappointing for a team that was full of optimism coming into this race. And that's the issue with Bristol, we think. Things happen fast. Three laps down. Rick, that is so, it's not impossible. If everybody pitch, you can take wave rounds, a bunch of different combinations. But man, it's a long 500 laps trying to get back from that deficit. So you mentioned there's Denny Hamlin. You said the 48 and the 18 just ahead. Listen, that's motivation. If you're Denny Hamlin and you can go put the 18 car lap down, we talked about how many race wins Kyle Busch has here. Put him a lap down, make his night that much more difficult. That's what you want to do right now. Go take the fight to him. Make his night hard. And listen, Jimmy Johnson, I thought, had a great car. He stayed in front of Kyle Busch this entire run, doing the right thing. But now here he is in trouble, going a lap down. He's running in the 20th position. This 11 is putting a great pace as he gets inside the 18th. Kyle Busch, how hard will Kyle Busch fight him off? I don't know what he could do with traffic in front. It's, all, it's just going to be who can clear this traffic. You see Jimmy Johnson had trouble getting by the 34 of Michael McDowell. It's hard to make that pass on the bottom, but he's able to clear him right there. Denny Hamlin staying on the bottom of the racetrack, trying to put the 18 a lap down. He clears him. Now, sets his sights on the 48, trying to put him a lap down as well. We showed that. Oh, oh contact. Hit Jimmy Johnson and and the, hit the three of Austin Dillon. And a caution does come out. I think the three had an issue. Went up the track, hit the wall, the 48. And I hammered into his corner. There you go. It's Jimmy Johnson. He said the three blew a right front in front of him. The 48 hit right into his rear bumper. And after 79 green flag laps, this will bring the entire field to pit road. Well, and where they were in relation to the 48 as well as the 18 will determine who gets the free pass. Also, who just went a lap down. A lot happened here in turn three. 
So you heard Jimmy Johnson say the three of Austin Dillon. There he is. He has that problem. No way the 48 can slow down. But look behind him. Denny Hamlin, he's trying to get slowed down. On the brakes hard. Can't get it turned. A little bit of contact. Man. That's how quick it happens. I mean, that's Bristol. That's just nothing you can do. You see Austin Dillon, he knows he has a problem. He just can't keep the car on the bottom of the racetrack because there's no air in the tire. And race leader Denny Hamlin with probably some right side damage there as he got into the 48. And a small thing, but it's not small, is where did Kyle Busch end up? Through all that, that's what Kyle Busch, the first car one lap down, Parker. Guys, Austin Dillon just came across radio again, described what happened there, just said it just popped. The car was pretty good, had no warning whatsoever the right front was going down before that. So, Steve, that's the second right front we've seen down. We're only 81 laps into this race. That would concern me as a driver to have two tires down this early. You're giving me nightmares. You as a driver, I'm the same way. What? What am I going to try to do here? You know, something could happen. And hey, you mentioned the 18. You thought he got lucky enough, but there's actually no free pass because at the time of the yellow, the first car scored one lap down was the 48. Yes. So he would have been eligible for the free pass, but you cannot be eligible if you're part of the accident, which the 48 was. So what you thought was a good break for Kyle Busch is not. He will remain one lap down. And now you see Danny Hamlin take the left hand turn. And everyone in the lead lap will come to Pitt Road. Rick. Pit Road here is so tight, Marty. 82 laps in, you know everybody's going to come to Pit Road, Steve. And interesting that Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Larson both complaining about the same thing. When they're on the bottom in that grip compound, they're too tight. When they're on the top, they're way too loose. In fact, Chad Johnson asked Kyle Larson, well, where do you want to run? He said, I would like to make the bottom work if I can. So they're going to make adjustments for that. Kyle Larson has the advantage of this first pit stall here on the back stretch. We'll see if he can gain some time, Parker. Kurt Busch gets into his pit stall. It's going to be four Goodyear tires, Snooko Fuel. But the thing for Kurt is he's just too loose right now. He told me before the race, I just have to survive the first half. If I do that, I should be all right. The 95 and Matt DiBenedetto, also four tires, struggling being tied off, Kelly. Danny Hamlin in that 11 car said his car transitioned from being a little bit free to being tight off towards the end of that run. They said they were going to have to pull on the right side of that car. A little bit of damage from contact with the 48. It's four Goodyear tires and a little bit of a lengthy stop for Hamlin. Bad pit stop for the 11. The race off pit road brought to you by Kroger. Losing a lot of spots is Denny Hamlin. What an incredible scene when you come to Bristol, Tennessee and see this, the last great Coliseum. Uh, such a majestic building and facility here. A lot of excitement, a lot of energy. You see how many people are here tonight. A lot of campers here. There's a lot of good things going on in the sport right now, and the fans are coming back to these racetracks. Awesome to see. 
All right, Rick, you mentioned it. Danny Hamlin, a lot of spots lost on the pit stop. We wondered if it was a slow stop, but it actually looked like all damage repair. You see right here, that's pretty heavy contact with the 48. That right front is pushed in quite a bit. They didn't want a rub. I think it was a good decision by Chris Gabehart. So watch the front tire change. It takes the tire off. We're going to take some extra time here. Make sure we kind of pull, hammer out that fender. Kelly, I think the 11 making a good decision repairing the car on this pit stop. Chris Gabehart just saying he feels good about the tire clearance right now. That caution uh, came at a good time because as they pulled the tires off, they saw that that right rear was in fact flat. How about Chase Elliott? He started second, running six when this caution came out. Kyle Larson won the race off pit road. He will lead the field back to the restarts and a great restart for Larson. Chase Elliott, how about that 95 of Matty D there outside row three? Gonna force his way into the third position. You see both restarts. The initial start of the race and that restart, the outside lane has launched way better than the inside lane. Let's see if that stays true all night long. They go to the bottom. Kevin Harvick goes right to the middle in the four. So now Harvick trying to get by the 19 of Martin Trucks Jr. using that little bit higher line. Look at this crossover. Got that run on corner exit, then turn left. Let Martin Truex know that's going to be my spot. Martin couldn't block it. Now Martin's clear. Through the bottom. Spot yelling, clear, clear. Good fight for fourth year. Truex Jr. has it. Right behind them, Ryan Blaney in the 12 with a good run. Eric Jones in the 20 just behind them. After the pit stops, it's Larson. Elliott, DiBenedetto, Truex Jr., Harvick, top five, then Blaney, Eric Jones, Kurt Busch, Brad Kozlowski, Eric Almarola in the top ten. And further back in the field. See right here, Mike McDowell. Oh, that's Ryan Priest on the outside of him. Three wide on the exit of the corner here is not normally going to work. And now hugging the bottom again after they put the fresh Goodyear tires on. Yeah, I think that's the key. Those fresh tires really do like the bottom of the racetrack. That may change over the course of the evening, but right now, everyone right around the bottom of the racetrack. And as we watch the leaders, another battle farther back. You have, remember, Kyle Busch didn't get that free pass. Well, here he is right here. He's in position. And I'm going to mention the 37. He's not quite in frame. He's a few cars back. But that's who you see right there, the gold, number 37, four cars back. That's who he has to race, as we see Dylan. Uh, gotta get heavy damage. He's going to have to come to pit road and continue his repairs. Mark on the side of the three. Saw him get up into the wall, and now even more issues here. The sparks coming out from the back. Yeah, it's unfortunate for the three. Parker. And guys, it's not good news for Kyle Busch. Although he's in the lucky dog position, he came across the radio and described the car underneath that caution and said, I have no grip. It feels like I'm running on marbles, which is not something you want around here at Crystal. I just don't think that car is really doing exactly what he wants. And Steve, that's a tough thing to fix, lack of grip. Yeah, lack of grip. Uh, there's not a grip knob. You have to understand whether it's air pressure or wedge. And I, <laughs> Burton laughed when I said that. How many times have you said lack of grip? Well, that's what Jimmy Johnson's facing right here. He's one lap down involved in that incident his team got his car repaired he's gonna battle Kyle Larson very hard here though he doesn't want to go too down he can't afford it he's in this battle trying to make the playoffs making one lap up is not impossible making two up gets very very difficult you're gonna have to have a lot of things go your way to make two up Dave so Jimmy when he first got into the accident radio quickly to his team that the steering was fine but he was worried about smoke in the cockpit that was from tires rubbing they seem to have gotten that all pulled away and so far the car is not overheating but Steve you know as well as I do the front of that car is dinged up they had to pull away some tape and try to get it uh, you know right for him and at this point I mean, you can only battle the 42 so much. You just have to hope that the race comes to you, that the people you're racing at points don't have the best day. Unfortunately for Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Newman running 11th, looking pretty good. Ran sixth here, or excuse me, ninth here in April. Ran inside the top 10, so a good run for Newman. Now he's just outside the top 10. And oh, Jimmy almost jumped the cushion a little there. Look at this move. Kyle Larson making it three wide. Can he make this bottom work? And he does. Yeah, a little bobble there by the 48 of Johnson, and now Larson has put him two laps down. 
Larson out front, Elliott chasing him, running second as we go NASCAR nonstop for Bristol. NASCAR Drive, that's your live race day companion. You can select up to eight different cameras, or you can watch four at one time with a multi-camera view. Just visit nascar.com slash drive or download the NASCAR mobile app today. And what an incredible shot Kroger has given us here, as well as Ryan Priest and JTD jo Doherty Racing. Uh, we thank them for giving us this opportunity. We talked about the battle that Kyle Busch is having with the handling of this 18 car. Well, that 37 is now in front of him for the free pass position. Now, unfortunately for these two, Kyle Larson is continuing to lap other cars, but this is how the pass happened. You see Kyle Busch up the racetrack and just a big wheel. Does a nice job not getting into the wall, but this 18, if they think they're going to get back in this race, they're going to have to work on their handling. Well, they're going to have to, you know, there's, there's, fortunately for them, there's only nine laps to go in this stage because Kyle Larson is mowing them down. I mean, he is way faster. They, he could get them in a situation to lap them again, but I don't think there's enough laps for him to get there. Eight to go, and it's Larson Elliott. Had a great battle right now for third. Truex just took it, or is trying to take it away from Benedetto. I think the fastest of these three cars is this four car with this Hunt Brothers pizza cam. He has been working on these guys and again it looks like to me Kevin Harvick can kind of run wherever he wants his strength of his car on the top is on the exit but see right here he kind of see how he entered differently Matt, Matty D and he completely different entrances to the corner and out of the bottom he's trying to take that spot away that's a fight for fourth and, and, and I really believe we're going to see different names cycle to the front. We have, we're, you know, the 11 of Denny Hamlin. He's mired back in the 11th position. They had to fix that right front fender. You have to ask yourself how much damage that car has. And the track is going to change between the traction compound wearing off, the top groove coming in, the sun going down. And look at this battle right here between Larson and Chase Elliott with five laps to go in the stage. That's for the, the lead as well as maybe the stage win. And a playoff point. Kyle Larson 
And Chase Elliott fighting for that as the battle for fourth continues on the right side of the screen. But now coming up on three laps to go Larson and Chase Elliott as Elliott tries that high line following Daniel Hemrick in the eight. And Hemrick not as quick sliding up in front of him the 42 of Kyle Larson. He slows and here comes the nine. Chase Elliott to the inside for the lead. That's a lot of contact. Daniel Hemrick trying to stay in the lead lap. Larson slid him. Hemrick and Elliott both tried to cross him over. Now one to go in stage one. They were side by side. Larson up high. Elliott down low. They've got lap cars in front of them. Larson with the pass. Now the final time through three and four for stage one. It's going to be Kyle Larson. What a finish. It's only stage one, guys. <laughs> Ow. I got to sit down. Larson Elliott putting on a great show. Elliott able to get past Kyle Larson. Then Larson fights back and takes the lead over and gets the win. Kyle Larson, winner of stage one. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Wendy's Spicy Nuggets. Wendy's, we got you. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Perfect for race fans. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. You catch all the action of NASCAR on NBC with the NBC Sports app. Get close with alternate camera angles, driver stats, come anytime, anywhere. NBCSports.com slash live. And Cruz up on the wall. This will be an interesting strategy call here, Steve. How many will come? It looks like Kyle Larson's going to lead a lot of the lead lap cars onto pit road. You see most cars pit. I guess the question will be is it will be automatic four tires or we'll see someone try two, Dave. And it won't be the nine. They will take four fresh Goodyear tires and a Phillips Noco fuel. And we'll go to Marty. Dave, fourth playoff point for Kyle Larson of the season after that stage one win here at Bristol. He said he got arrow tight once they hit traffic, and he said there is a significant difference handling-wise when you're on the bottom. He said it feels good, still a little bit too tight, but up top, he is way free. Let's see if he can hold serve here on the front backstretch pit road, and actually the nine beats him out here on the backstretch, Parker. And Kurt Busch was describing his car, saying it was too loose to start, too tight to end, and he wished he had Better information is before Goodyear Tires snow go fuel for him. Matt DeBenedetto just said he's losing drive and grip for Goodyear Tires snow go fuel, Kelly. After an air pressure adjustment last time down pit road, Brad Keselowski says he's really pretty happy with that number two car, so it's just four Goodyear Tires and snow go fuel. No gamblers, Rick. Looks like everybody took four tires. Four tires, 
Chase Elliott beats Kyle Larson off pit road. Time for Hey Rudd, presented by Toyota. Let's go to the Peacock Pit Box in Rutledge Wood. Rick, I had a chance earlier to head out to the campgrounds and go check out Toyota Racing's ultimate tailgate that they were having. And guess who I saw? Tim Love. Take a look, the world-famous chef from Texas. He was putting on a big old tailgate today out of his custom tundra that everything is set up there. The coolest part is he was making rattlesnake and rabbit sausage and lamb chops that he let the airmen and women who did the flyover earlier have a little sample of. And now he's down here on the 11 pit box cheering on Denny Hamlin. How cool is that? A great night for Tim Love to be here. Put on a little something special for our friends at Toyota Racing. Now I know why Rutledge didn't want lunch. Yeah, we're hungry up here, Rudd, after watching that. Tim Love cheering on the 11. A quick little update on this cycle of pit stops. 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Decided to stay on the racetrack and wave around just a one lap down. We'll see if it works for the 48. Trying to get some of those points. Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. It was Chase Elliott who won the race off of pit road. He has chosen the outside line as the field approaches the Geico restart zone. So that top lane just launches so much better. Kevin Harvey saw right there he had a great run all those sparks came out from underneath the car I think that hurt the way the car was going to turn slow to center up just a little bit bobble there for the 12 of Ryan Blaney looked like he had the momentum to get by the 42 wasn't able to stay on the gas now he's making the move as he tries to get by the 42 for third Ryan Blaney was really fast yesterday in practice Elliot Harvick Blaney. Here comes Larson once again and Shrex Jr. I love this shot of oh. the bumper. Look at that. You see that left foot working left to right. Blaney was busy in there. Blaney way up high, trying to take advantage of a little of that rubber that's been put down high on the racetrack. Keeping the momentum up as he Tries to work back around Martin Shrex Jr., but what a what a moment he had just moments ago. Yeah, look, look how the back of the car is so around on it. That's a handful. You know what I love about race car drivers is what do you do the next lap, next corner? He just drove it down there like it was going to stick. You don't have a choice. It's a Bristol. You just got to keep going. Look what Blaney's doing now. Blaney all over Larson. Now he goes back high again, trying to use that momentum. Big run. Going to get to the outside of the 42. I was going to say, look at the left side of your screen. You mentioned how good Blaney was in practice. That 20 of Eric Jones was also a great car. But who needs a good run more than perhaps Clint Boyer in the 14? Six DNFs 
currently in 2019. That is just so much bad luck. I was, he came and joined me on the pit box yesterday. I was worried the wheels were going to fall off that thing, as bad as his luck has been this year. But he said he just has to keep fighting. He said he loves this racetrack and showing up already running seventh, Dave. Looks like a good adjustment on that white 12 of Ryan Blaney. He said, I need help firing off, and that's driver, that is a driver driving with confidence right now, Marty. Left-hand side of your screen, Eric Jones, who said, quote, if you have basketballs for tires, Steve, you got to unpack that one for us. Basketballs here at Bristol. But Clint Boyer having a fantastic run for that team right now in seventh position for that team. And you mentioned near the cut line. Boyer said the racetrack changed so much this weekend, we sort of panicked. And now a battle for the lead. See right there. Ryan Blaney finally clears the 42 for the third position. Basketball, something about concrete racetracks. You start with the air pressure down, trying to get grip, and as they get hot, they build up as you see the 42 sliding around, and they bounce. I, some of it's the rubber on the racetrack, some of it's just the shape of the concrete corners, and that's, I've heard so many drivers describe it like these tires have turned into basketballs. When you're driving down the interstate, and it's a concrete interstate, and you hear that boom, 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 you, you're crossing that in your car, that's what it does. But imagine going three times the speed, <laughs> and you're hitting those bumps that quickly. That's what the driver's feeling. Yeah, going over a half a mile in 15 seconds here at Bristol. Yeah, the 22 of Joey Logano, currently two laps down. He had issues early, but even at two laps down, you cannot continue to give. You have to be aggressive, try to move forward. The 88 gets up in front of him, kind of gives him a shot in the rear bumper. Blaney now working by lap traffic, and Truex caught up high. Will that allow Larson to get by? No, he doesn't. Larson falling back now. He's all the way back to fifth. Elliott has an eight-tenth of a second lead over Harvick. Then it's Blaney, Truex, and Larson, top five. Eric Jones is sixth. Boyer to Benedetto back to eighth. Keselowski ninth, and Kurt Busch is tenth. Denny Hamlin still in that 11th position, has not been able to move. Yeah, that damage, we'll have to see. We saw them pull out the right front fender after that damage ran so well in that first stage. We'll have to see maybe is the track getting away from him. Is the damage a little heavier than they thought? Can they continue to adjust the 11? Blaney and Truex still undecided about this third spot. Kelly? You guys talking about Denny Hamlin in that 11. Well, aside from the damage that they had to work on on pit road, it sounds like previous adjustments kind of hurt the handling of this race car. Denny telling his crew chief that his entry was not as good on the last run, and he needed to be a little bit tighter starting things off. So they made more adjustments. We'll see how they pan out this time around. We talk about the fine details in a setup. It's not just a fender. If you hit that right front wheel, that dip, that hard you could bend a tie rod a spindle basically the toe could be in or out they, they adjust this in millimeters fractions of an inch if it's now the wrong way they're going to have to adjust other things in the car to offset that try to get the car driving better and see one of the, the most difficult things about that was was it the change that you made or yeah. is it the damage and the reason that's important is because you build off of changes right you make one change it does this and you make another change based on that but maybe that information is wrong because it was the damage that's causing the field, not the change of the car. You asked Eric Jones the difficulty of Bristol before the race even started, and he said it was a mix of the physical battle and the mental battle. Here is the physical battle. Look at Daniel Suarez. Look at that right hand. Every single lap, every corner, just squeezing and tugging on that wheel. There's so much force on these cars. The, these, the steering is actually hard to turn. It's going to be a battle for 500 laps. Head keeps bouncing around for Suarez.
An incredible fight for the lead. Harvick trying to take it away from Chase Elliott. This Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol Motor Speedway definitely heating up. Jeff, why did the nine get the four to the top? He had him held up running right the top. He went to the bottom, let Kevin Harvick to his quarter panel. That allowed Harvick by. Harvick now with the lead. Elliott running second. Truex is up to third. 85 to go in stage two. Are you surprised these two cars are out front, the four and the nine? They've combined for three of the last four race wins this year. Yeah, a lot of momentum as the playoffs are getting closer. And now you see the 48 back in the picture. Could go another lap down. The four of Kevin Harvick, race leader, all over the back bumper of the 48, but a little bit slow there, and that allowed Mark Trex Jr. to close the gap. We talked about the 11 car being hurt from his damage. I think this 48 car is also hurt from that same incident. Johnson two laps down, not wanting to go the third, and he's already been passed there. So three laps down for Jimmy Johnson. Truex, and here comes Elliott. Those two fighting for second. So we're going to see right here. Chase Elliott had done a nice job holding the four car up, running the top of the racetrack, but then he chooses to go to the bottom. And it was like Christmas morning for Kevin Harvick. He gave him clean air on the nose. He didn't want it to. And then he comes to three and four. He does it again. I think Kevin Harvick is shocked. He gave him that outside lane, and Harvick makes it work. I'm going to tell you what you saw right there. You saw Chase Elliott being a 50-year-old race car driver in the experience instead of the age that he is. This is Bristol. Why hold the guy up? If you hold the guy up, he's run you down, you stand a better chance of getting wrecked. That's old school racing at Bristol. That, that's using your head. We're not halfway yet. We're not even halfway. Harvick had run him down big time. He just said, look, I'm not going to hold this guy up. I don't want him to get me in a bad spot. And that was the decision that he made. And look at Harvick now running away from Truex. He's already got a second on him when he went by, actually, when Harvick went by Jimmy Johnson and put him two laps down, not three. Listen, this four car, this four car is getting hot at the right time. They, you know, they were not what you are accustomed to seeing with this team early in the year. They are now. And and you better watch out. Coming in, heading into the playoffs with a team that's hot, on fire, leading laps, winning races, this team's going to be hard to guard, Dave. Well, and Jeff, he was asked about that this week and deflected a little bit because even though he said, I'll take momentum any time, especially winning momentum after Michigan last week. Uh, but he said, you know, the important time, of course, is to get hot late. If you watch what we do when we won our championship, it was later in the year when things really came together, which is tough to do in this business. Marty? Yep. Dave, with some big names already a lap down, how about this run for David Reagan sitting in the 18th position right now on the lead lap and currently the fifth fastest car on the racetrack. Make that the second fastest car on the racetrack, that pass lap. So he's certainly turning in some good lap times. Of course, the news this week that at the end of 2019, he would retire from full-time racing. Racing David Reagan with two Cup Series wins, a 13-year-plus career here in the Cup Series, and going out on his own terms. I can't think that can't be said enough, Jeff. The team didn't ask him to leave. He said, I want to leave to spend more family time. Not a lot of people get to do that in their career. David Reagan doing it very well. Yeah, he said that he wanted to spend more time with his young daughters and his wife. You know, proud of him, right? He's 457 starts, two wins. It's just it's time for him. It's time for him to spend some time with his family. Good for him. And David joined me on the pit box during qualifying, actually right after qualifying. Kind of shocked me. He said, you know, I'd really like to go run the 24 hours of Daytona. I, I had no idea he had any sort of... Uh, you know, interest in going to run that race. So, you know, open up the schedule a little bit. He also said he'd drive the bus for his, his two girls, five years old and three years old, take him to school, Kelly. Well, Rick, things might be going from bad to worse for Denny Hamlin, who's already lost positions in time, fixing damage, and now he says he thinks he might have a loose wheel. The crew chief, Chris Gatehart, leaving it up to his discretion, when and if he needs to bring it to pit road. Uh, we've seen it already. The 22 had an issue earlier, and it was two, almost three laps on pit road. 15-second laps. It doesn't take long to lose them if you have an issue. Yeah, the other thing is Denny Hamlin right now six and a half seconds behind race leader Kevin Harvick. Yeah, and the track is definitely changing. Larson, we know, had damage, and we wondered if it was the adjustment. Oh, excuse me. Denny Hamlin had damage, and we wondered if it was the adjustment. But Kyle Larson in the fifth position, another car that was dominant early, just doesn't seem to be quite as good. Yeah, and, and Kelly said that they gave Chris Gabehart a crew chief for 11. Here you go. He said, hey, look. 
So he's making the decision. He's saying it's definitely a loose wheel. And, and really the only person to make that decision is the driver, right? It's a terrible spot to be in as a driver because there's been times in my career where I thought I had something wrong, I pitted and they found nothing. And then you feel horrible. But at this racetrack, a loose wheel, it can damage something very, very quickly. So if he feels that for too long, he'll have to come in. And now he's right in the thick of it. So much traffic around him if he does want to dive onto pit road. Still chasing after the 95 of Matt DiBenedetto. Parker? And guys, Matt has been He got a little radio there. Matt DiBenedetto has been falling back as well there. He's just struggling being way too loose inside that 95 car, lacking rear grip and can't seem to get the handle on it. They're trying to help him out and encourage him on the radio in terms of how well he's doing in the top 10 right now, but trying to hold on that top 10 position. We heard a little bit of that communication. It sounded as though Denny said, I'm coming to you. Now he does make the turn. He's on pit road. He's on the front stretch side of pit road. So this is where he is able to enter pit road. We talked about mistakes that we see at other racetracks are compounded because the speed and intensity of Bristol, not just the speed of the cars, but the quickness of the lap times as the 11 comes to the service, Kelly. Then he just couldn't hang on any longer. He said he thinks it's on the right side, but they're going to do a four tire change regardless. And now we're going to see as the cars continue to go by. This is certainly going to put Benny down a lap, if not two. Four tires fuel for Denny Hamlin. They're going to check to see if there was a loose wheel. Oh! And into the wall, Eric Almarola. Will it bring out the caution? And that is Denny Hamlin had just made that decision. So frustrating, he rode as long as he could, and you see heavy, heavy damage on the 10 car. Man, I got a tire rub. Down the back straightaway. Dry oh, got just in the 54. Yeah, it came down, it looked like on the 54 of J.J. Yaley. Oh, that was my reaction. I mean, Denny Hamlin doesn't know, right? Oh, that's if, right. If that wheel breaks on the 11, if it's loose, night's over, right? So he has to come to pit road. Heavy damage on the 10. The only good break, if you can say there is one for the 11 of Denny Hamlin, is I think most cars should come to pit road. He can stay on the racetrack and maybe get one of his two laps back. But look at Eric. Look at Eric. He's going down the back straightaway. He turns to get to the bottom of the racetrack and just clips. Clips Yaley. I mean, that's not Yaley's fault. That's Eric Amarola trying to get to the line that he's trying to get to and just misjudging it. And look at all this damage. Let's listen in to the 11 radio. Damn it. Don't worry about it, man. Play the ball from where it lands. One down, 300 to go. Rick, you have a lot of experience with that, don't you? <laughs> normally, it's in the taller grass for Rick, so if we can locate it. It's in the rough from normally, there. yes. God, it, you feel terrible. As a driver, you're like, if I could have just held on for a lap, Two laps more, we'd have been okay, but you have to trust what you're feeling. You just have to make that decision and deal with the consequences. All that damage to the right rear of the 10 of Eric Almarola. We see race leader Kevin Harvick with Truex in tow. Dave. And Harvick said what to fix is the million dollar question. He's very free off the corner, but doesn't turn well in the center. He told his crew chief, Roddy Childers, let's fix the center. Marty. Martin Truex Jr. told Cole Pern, the bottom is much better right here. He radioed back, well, your lap times were excellent. Too free to start the run, but tighter the longer they ran. Going to be an air pressure adjustment for Truex pitting here on the backstretch pits, along with Harvick and Kyle Larson as well. Parker. Marty Kurt Busch pits out of the 11th position. He's been telling his crew chief Matt McCall that whatever they did on the last stop did not work. He needs that car to not be so loose at the beginning of the run and so tight at the end of the run. It's the only feedback he's really had. Matt DiBenedetto just simply needs more rear grip. He has to be tighter to compete, Kelly. Brad Keselowski in the two pits from the 8th position. He said he's a little bit free on entry and tight getting off the turns. Four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. You saw the 19 able to get off of pit road first. Kevin Harvick had an issue on the left side when they dropped the jack.
You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol. This telecast presented by Wendy's. Now tomorrow, the NTT IndyCar Series is on NBCSN. That race coverage from Pocono will begin at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. A great championship battle going on. Just Newgarden, Alexander Rossi, those two separated by just 16 points. Pagano's back there, 47 points. The Indy 500 winner and 2016 champion. So a big fight with four races remaining in the IndyCar Series. So you saw Kevin Harvick and his team, they had a slow stop. But one of the advantages in running really well is look at he and Martin Truex Jr. They had put so many cars between he and the third place car of, of Larson that they had gapped them so far that even with this slow stop, they had a problem right here. You see the jack car, it looks like the car fell off the jack. But even with that, because there were so many cars between he and third place, it only hurt him one spot. All right, let's listen into the radio. Good recovery there. A jack came out. Had to reset it, start over. I felt it. And back to green flag racing. Truex Jr. on the high side has Larson right behind him. Harvick didn't lose too much from that bobble on pit road. But now he's trying to fight off Blaney, who's working that high line. Obviously, tonight's a big difference between being at a start in that outside lane versus the bottom. So, you know, the four car gave up that. But it could have been much worse with that slow of a stop. Side by side for second. It's the choice right now for Kevin Harvick. Which line are you hoping goes? You see Harvick working the bottom of the racetrack. Larson clears him. Blaney running very high. Has the momentum but can't complete the pass. Larson's being, Larson's been playing really nice early in the race. It's been a couple times he's been clear. Could have pulled up in front of Blaney. Blaney took advantage of it and took the spot back. Well, this battle's for second on the racetrack. Battles everywhere on the left side of your screen. The two yellow cars, the 21 of Paul Menard, the 18 of Kyle Busch, they are continuing to battle for that free pass position. Menard has now taken it away from Kyle Busch. That 21 car making Kyle Busch's life difficult right here. Menard a lap down, as is Kyle Busch. Bubba Wallace is the last car on the lead lap, running 18th, Parker. Hey, guys, as you watch Kyle Busch try to battle there with Paul Menard, Adam Stevens came on the radio underneath that caution and said that basically at the end of that run, he was running lap times good enough to compete with the leaders as he gets inside of Paul Menard. What a move there into the uh, lucky on position. Look at this bat. I love this view right here. This shows how hard these drivers are working. I think this shows how much the car moves around, perhaps better than any other view. We're on board with Ryan Priest, 21st. He's one lap down, so he's in this battle as well. So he can get in front of him, he would get the free pass position. Some other cars doing a great job staying on the lead lap. The 43, Darrell Wallace Jr., he got his flat back, he's running 18th. Here's that contact at three wide you talked about, Rick. And Daniel Hemrick at 17th. Hey, you stay on the lead lap. 205 laps into Bristol with, with the pace some of these leads are setting. Well done. So Kyle Busch right now is in the free pass position, but for how long? If they stay green and Truex Jr. is able to keep up the pace he's going, he will catch the back of this field. So Kyle Busch and his team, they. they Kyle Busch is great at this racetrack, and one of the reasons he's great is he knows what his car needs to be at the end of the race. But Steve, that's not always what you wanted at the beginning of the race. But going into qualifying, I don't think they had any way of knowing they were going to qualify 31st and start that far in the back. This car has been too loose. The car does not have enough rear grip. He's going to be okay. Later in this race, the track's going to tighten up. His car is going to get better. The question is, can he stay in the lead lap and take advantage of a car that's going to be improving through the night? That's the battle. That's what you have to try to figure out. Will you be good enough to be around? And you have to be in this position if the caution does come out. But it has to come out before Truex Jr. catches up to Bubba Wallace, who right now there's a half a lap gap between race leader Martin Truex Jr. and where Bubba Wallace is running currently on the track. Blaney running second, Larson is third. Those two both to the bottom of the racetrack, getting by the slower traffic. 
Truex with an eight tenth of a second lead over Blaney. Yeah, and we have another little, you know, switch up from top. Kevin Harvick all the way back at fifth. Dave. And you guys talked about the track changing, and that's definitely happening for the 12 team of Ryan Blaney. They've kind of gone back and forth. It was a little free earlier, but that was way tighter on that last run. So they've made adjustments for him. And Steve with the traction compound wearing out and spin up Eric above Alvarola. him. Alvarola around right in front of the 51. And a caution has come out again. 20 more. Kyle Busch was able to stay in that position, so it looks as though he will get the free pass. He will be the 19th car on the lead lap. Showed that battle with Paul Menard. It's paying off for Kyle Busch, the 10 of Almirola. He had just was the, the, the previous yellow, so you have to ask maybe does he have damage or what happened here. We'll get a replay and take a look, but. Okay, Eric spun right in front of the leader. In turn one, you mentioned, Steve, they had that damage before. See it sparking a little bit, entering the corner. I'm sure it's just a product of the damage. Yeah. That's a, oh! That's yeah. a uh, smart <laughs> place to spin out. Yeah. And NASCAR has confirmed the 18 does get the free pass. That was a close call for P.J. McLeod, shutting it down right before he got into Eric Almirola. I just think this 18 is going to be a going to be you still think he's a threat I 100% think he's a threat so now he's inside the top 20 he's running 19th he'll be on the lead lap when he gets his free pass and Rick that was a big break for not just Kyle Busch while we documented the battle he's been having with his car trying to get back let's talk about some guys that had issues earlier right with the 48 was involved in an accident well he took the wave around so he's in the 26th position he, this caution saves him. He can now come to Pitt Road. He's only one lap down. The 22 of Joe Logano, he also took the wave around as we take another look at the 10 up top there, right in front of the leader. That's got to get your attention, Jeff. Yes. 22. Yeah, the 22 he took, took the wave, wave around. around. So all those guys gained the lap right there. And Denny Hamlin, think about him. He had that loose wheel. He didn't catch it quite perfect, but he took the wave around. Now he's only one lap down. We talk about this because this is what battle it. Bristol is going to be a battle. Things don't go perfect. You're going to lose laps. How do you recover in adversity? That's what these teams are doing. And Steve, they know that there'll be another caution coming out at about 35 laps at the end of stage two. Let's take a look at the Toyota driver update. Martin Trex Jr. currently out front, did not come to pit road. Eric Jones running in the top 10 in seventh. So is Matt DiBenedetto in 10th. 
Then it's Kyle Busch back on the lead lap now, running in 19th. Denny Hamlin still a lap down in 20th. And you can go inside the headset with access to NASCAR scanner all weekend long. You see the spotters high atop the press box here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Go to NASCAR.com slash scanner. Monthly subscriptions start at just $2.99. And how important are the spotters here at Bristol? Oh, spotters are huge here, and it's, it's amazing how busy they are. They love cautions. They get to catch their breath a little bit. Huge workload for these guys. And Field once again coming up to the Geico restart zone. Truex and Blaney. Then Elliott right behind Truex in that high line. What will Kevin Harvick do? Here comes the one. Kurt Busch using that high line. Harvick went to the bottom, giving Kurt Busch the, on the outside. Kurt Busch rolled up on the nine. Parker. And guys, Kurt Busch came on the radio just before that restart and said, I think the top is going to come in here because we're all in hot scuffs. Well, I think he's right. It's definitely working. <laughs> yeah, he was right. Got to love the commitment, too, right? He didn't go to the middle. He went to the top. He believed it was going to work. And clearly it did. Up to third, now fighting for second. Kurt Busch all over the back bumper, the 12 of Blaney. Truex trying to pull away again. Under 28 laps to go in stage two. Kurt Busch had a, has had a solid night. It looks as if Blaney running a different line. Is he diamonding this track? You know, right now, Rick, there, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You have to drive your car to where it needs. So right now, Clearly, we're watching Kurt Busch rolling the outside really, really quick. Going to get to the outside. Oh, Blaney. Going to get to the outside of Blaney. And so immediately you think, well, why didn't Blaney run up there? Well, maybe Blaney's car is better on the bottom, and only Blaney knows that. Blaney hugging the bottom. Kurt Busch running a little bit lower on the entry of the corner there, and he clears him. Kurt Busch up to second. The entire, I mean, he's the only one of this top eight cars. You know, well, now Blaney went with him, but and actually the whole field went with him. <laughs> they see him moving, but oh, big slide out of Blaney right there. Maybe Blaney didn't like that high line. He dives back down to the bottom. Well, we've heard out of the majority of the cars that they drive a little freer around the top. That would be what you saw the freer basically loose, like the back slides around. Blaney's line that kind of. Joey Logano seen the 22 run that line a lot. After the poor pit stop losing positions on pit road, Harvick now trying to gain some of those spots back as he closes the gap between himself and the nine. Look what's happening to this outside lane, right? The outside lane's not always the same. It keeps inching up. Look how high on corner exit the nine is. He's right against the wall on the exit of turn two. It just keeps getting pushed up closer and closer to the wall, Dave. And that last run when he lost spots on the track, it just suddenly went looser on him. And of course, sir, <laughs> he is way up the track there. As they try to loosen the cars a little bit as the night goes on, but it got too loose for him, and that's why he dropped the spots. Harvick trying to make the bottom of the track work for him again. That's a fight for the fourth position. So you heard Dave talking about loose. This is one of those racetracks that you want the car to turn really well, but oh, whoa, Close contact. Call for Blaney had to check up as the 52 got sideways in front of him. So Blaney avoiding contact with Kyle Weatherman. I thought I saw a little bit of smoke fly off. There you go, he took a, yeah, that was hard impact. And that was with the right front of that 12 of Blaney. So Blaney turns underneath him and then Weatherman starts to come down like he doesn't know he's there. I swear it's like his blind spot on the highway. He's right in that left rear area where if the spotter doesn't say anything, I really don't think he has any idea that Blaney's there. Blaney has every right to do what he's done. Let's listen in to what Blaney had to say. Damn, we're ripped, dude. Only those guys can just throw it off on forward. It's ridiculous. But just chatter the rear, chatter the front. And as a crew chief, you're frustrated because he's frustrated with the car, then he talks about the tire chatter. You know, after he gets, the driver gets animated and frustrated because of what something happens on the racetrack, now he's even more irritated about how his car's driving. Jeff, you and I talk about what one point means. 
Right now, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is in the 10th position. 15 laps to go in the stage. Clint Boyer, look at him. Look at the points on the left side of your screen. Plus seven to the cut line. Grinding, trying to pass that 17, but look right off the rear bumper of Clint Boyer, the 41 of Suarez. The car, Clint Boyer is trying to beat in points. It's gonna be a battle for this points available at the end of the stage. Laps continuing to wind down in stage two, 14 to go. We ride along with Suarez. Dave. And tough for the 17 to point his way in, so winning is an option, three to go for that. Talked to Brian Petty this morning, and he said, I'd just like to have all four fenders and a complete set of tires on the car at the end of the race. Then you've got a shot to win. That's what they need, Marty. Car pretty good right now, a little on the splitter. And Dave, what did Clint Boyer tell us on Motor Mouse on Wednesday on NASCAR America? He said, now is the time when we start paying attention to the other bubble drivers. They're certainly doing that right now. Brent Griffin, the spotter, has told him that is for a point in front of you. We must get past the 17. Even one point, Jeff, it means everything, doesn't it, to these drivers? One point could be huge. Could be the difference between moving along, making the playoffs or not. These right. guys are racing for points. We have a couple other cars racing for laps. Danny Hamlin in the 11, trying to come back from that loose wheel, currently in 20th in the free pass position, but two cars out of his rear bumper. Look at this, Joey Logano. This was the battle right here. Battling with Joey Logano, and you see the 10 right here gets right in front of the 22, blocks him. That gives the 11 a little breathing room. Now Logano is trying to run him back down. There you see live two, three car lengths. When you talk about stages and yellows, strategy and all these things matter. You know what else? A guaranteed yellow. These two drivers know. It's like racing to a checkered flag. They know whoever is in front of who will get their lap back. And that's how close it is for that free pass between the 11 and 22. And Clint Boyer goes around in the 14. He'll bring the caution out. Oh, Clint. Oh, looks very similar to what we saw Eric Amarola. Thought he had the slower car cleared. See right here, he thinks he's completely clear, turns to go to the bottom of the racetrack. And Quinn's there. Quinn Hoff was right there. Right in front of his teammate, yeah. the two racing in points. Close that is. As far as so Tony Stewart is somewhere holding his breath. Look at this. Okay, Hold, you holding your breath. Oh, gosh. I think you're there. Get him. Go, go. All right, I know you brushed it. We'll take a look at it here. Oh, that's close. All right, guys, pits are open. We're going to see who's going to try to win a stage, who's going to try to get track position. Well. Look at this, Martin Trex Jr. peels off. Chase Elliott, we see Kurt Busch stay on the racetrack. Dave. And Chase Elliott in the nine said, I don't know, there's not much difference between being as good as we are and maybe where we need to be. So they'll take four tires and fuel here, Marty. Interesting, a split strategy here with some of the cars staying on the racetrack going for the stage points that'll be paid in six laps here. Truex saying the car, very good. A very slight air pressure adjustment is all they're gonna give him, Parker. Matt DiBendetto will pit out of the eighth position. He's getting a lot happier in that race car. He said it's not as bad, but still free. They're going to give up the stage points to try and put themselves in the best position to go for a win. It's going to be four Goodyear tires to go fuel, Kelly. And it was a last second call for Brad Keselowski to come to pit road. And Brad saying that that two car is just a little bit too free everywhere. So they're going to give him four Goodyear tires to make an air pressure adjustment. Splash of Sunoco fuel. So the race off pit road, it is the 19 of Martin Trucks Jr. How about this move? Kurt Busch decides to stay out. The 11 of Denny Hamlin gets the free pass.
standing by. And big news the four of Kevin Harvick being pushed into the garage Dave. Yep they call transmission issues just bring it to the garage we'll go ahead and change the transmission but that changes the entire outlook of the night for Kevin Harvick. Getting ready for the restart. It's Kurt Busch who stayed out and then Daniel Suarez on the inside of row one. It just showed the misfortune for the 14. Well that puts Daniel Suarez purely in position to gain a ton of points at the end of this stage. Right behind him the six of Ryan Newman. Suarez fighting for potentially a stage win. Kurt Busch running well Locked on that high line, line pulling up. away. Six right on you. Six is one lane up here. Can he hang on for a second place finish in the stage. Final time through three and four for stage two. Kurt Busch is going to win stage two. Suarez a lot of points finishing second in that stage. Newman. Kyle Busch, William Byron, Chase Elliott, Eric Jones, Brad Keselowski, Daniel Hemrick, and Martin Truex Jr., the top 10. And Kevin Harvick, just a few moments ago, the dejection taking place with this team. Kurt Busch now is going to come to pit road after winning stage two Dave. So will Daniel Suarez after giving it a good shot there. Good stage points for him a little bit tighter on this run for the 41 driver. So they'll make an adjustment here for Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel Marty. Well you got to give a tip of the cap to Scott Graves last week at Michigan the last second call to come to pit road take fuel and that got them to the end of the race today staying out here in stage two and for a guy on the bubble they just earned eight stage points Ryan Newman now plus 30 car wise been a little bit too tight in the middle too free off the corner all day long Parker and what a set of restarts by Kurt Busch there call going to the top it worked to get that stage win it's Ford Goodyear tires so go fuel and a water bottle and William Byron finishing fifth in that stage it's Ford Goodyear tires says that car is rolling the center better well I don't want to worry the competition but when all of these cars came to pit road Kurt Busch's brother, Kyle Busch, stayed out on the racetrack. He will be the race leader when we come back. Say it ain't so.
And it's time now for the Subway Fresh Take. Let's check in with Rutledge Wood. Rick, I'm in the grandstands. I've spent about 50 laps down here, made a new friend, Brent. He's from West Virginia. His son, Jackson's watching. It's his birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. But right now, we're getting so excited because here at Bristol, they've got this awesome app. And if you look around, you're going to see all the phones start going off because they got crazy train that's going to go off. All these different things happen here, and the phones are synced up with Colossus. But, man, what a great place to watch the race from. I know it's comfy on your couch at home, but I'm telling you what, Rick, there are thousands and thousands of fans in the stands tonight getting ready for this action. What an experience. What a fan experience for someone to come here to Thunder Valley to Bristol Motor Speedway and just take this in. Out front once again it'll be Kyle Busch Chase Elliott making up row one. Eric Jones Brad Keselowski row two we've talked about the battle to get into the playoffs look at Boyer and Suarez now three points separate the two and those points that Newman and Suarez gained were all because of Boyer's spin Boyer's mistake is what gave them the opportunity to gain those points you heard his crew chief say got to go to work now they just you, we just gave them those point opportunities well you said go to work did you boys go to work on your fantasy? I, I made a garage change. Did you? Who'd you put in? I did. I put Kyle Larson in. Had him in my garage. Okay. I put him in. I took Clint Boyer out. And I wish I had the usage because look who's leading the field. You teased it. The 18 of Kyle Busch started in the back, got caught laps down, battled and battled, worked on the car. A little bit of pitch strategy was last on pit road about 45 laps ago. And here it is, Marty, the 18, leading the field at Bristol. Well, I asked Mike Bugaravich why they pitted there. He said because we spun. He was worried about a flat spot, but you guys are right. The 14 walked away from a lot of points right there. Now plus three above the cut line. Brad Keselowski coming into the picture now as he's running second. Chase Elliott is third. And that leader right there spent 137 laps a lap down. <laughs> and here he is leading a little bit older tire than the guys racing around him. And here Larson fighting with Eric Jones for position. Don't sleep on that 20 car of Eric Jones. Great in practice. Patience tries to pay off. Look at this battle right here. How about Elliott moving to the inside of Keselowski for second. Those two fighting for position allowing the 18 of Kyle Busch to run away. Chase Elliott pretty loose on the bottom of the racetrack. Saw the back of the car moving around a lot. Now he's going to jump up on the outside. Not much better there. It's going to take a few laps maybe for his car to get going. Now that we're in that final stage, I really believe this happens every week. When the green flag flies for the final stage, everybody kind of is like, OK, well, stages are over. Now we know how far it is the end of the race. It almost seems like the intensity picks up no matter how long that stage is. Here it's 250 laps. It's half the race. <laughs> Keselowski driving underneath the 18 of Bush. Can he get it? Can he complete the pass? Keselowski, Bush, fighting for the number one spot at Bristol. And Keselowski noses just in front of Kyle Bush. Remember, no love lost between these two when you come to a short track. Neither afraid to put the bumper to the other. Again, I think, I think Bush, obviously, Bush never likes giving up the lead, but he has more laps on his tires right now. He's going to, he's still okay. Just keep communicating to your team what the car needs to do better. As we watch this battle for the lead, that top 10, man, just keeps getting jumbled up. Boyer's all the way back to ninth. Blaney's in 10th. Hamlin 11th. How about Bubba Wallace up to 12th, Rick? By Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Does it surprise anybody that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is running in the top 10 at, at Bristol, a place where he's so good? Parker. And Jeff, you were talking about Kyle Busch understanding what they're trying to do, this strategy. Take a listen to their radio under that caution why they decided to do what they did. The only thing I think about here is uh, there's no more stage breaks. So it can go green forever. I almost think we stay here, take clean air, and we're probably not going to fall back. And you know what I mean? If we're going to restart 15, how far can we drive? And we're set down, too, so this even us up on the tires. Yeah, it's simple. I'm with you. 15, you probably get to 10th from here. You probably fall to 6. And as you can tell, a very calculated decision there in terms of how far back they would fall and where they could go with clean air is working out for them. Lots of information in that right there. Not only that they were a set of tires down because they had to pit that extra time. Whoa. 
trying to get their lap back. So Adam Stevens took that into account. Kyle Busch is saying, I'm a little concerned just because if the thing goes green, we're going to have to pit under green for fuel. But I think that clean air was a good idea. I mean, they're holding into the second position. They're just going to need a yellow somewhere in the next probably 70 or 80 laps. They don't have to pit under green. Interesting, too, that, that Kyle's in that conversation. Yeah. Like, a lot of drivers don't, don't want to be in that conversation. Like, you tell me when to come on pit road, and that's what I'm going to do. But Kyle wants to be involved in every decision. 28 laps difference between Keselowski and Kyle Busch, at least the strategy that they're on. Kyle Busch was on pit road at lap 217. Keselowski, Chase Elliott, Eric Jones, all of them on pit road at lap 245. Rick, I, I know it's Brad Keselowski, really talk about him anywhere. You think he can run pretty good. But Bristol, when I looked at speeds, when I looked at history, his name didn't come up. I never considered putting him in my fantasy lineup because his best finish here in the last seven races is 16th. He hasn't been in the top 15. Here is leading laps. He has two wins, but his most recent win here back in 2012, so yeah. seven years ago. Yeah, Steven, I think that doesn't count. <laughs> like okay. If you're going to look, if you're going to look who's running well today, you have to look at current stats. And I, I felt the same way. And I didn't think he showed speed in practice either. Not only the last few years, but practice didn't look good, Kelly. Well, it's interesting, in talking to Brad's crew chief, Paul Wolf, he noted that, hey, we had a couple wins, but they came kind of in our early stages of our partnership together. And lately, it's been kind of frustrating, but he pointed to the spring race when they had a really solid day. They were running top 10, top five most of the day. It was a black flag, remember, at the end of that spring race after confusion on a restart that cost them the finish there. But they were definitely feeling optimistic tonight. He said, I think we're in the box, a couple right adjustments, and we'll have a shot at this. And even with a little more laps on the tires of the 18 of Kyle Busch, he continues to work his way and close the gap between himself and Kyle Busch, or and Brad Keselowski. Are we surprised? No. I mean, that, it, it's an eight-time winner here. Yeah. I think he can figure out how to get around. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, the, the competition also knows he has more laps on his tires, and he's sitting there running the second or the third or the fourth fastest lap time on the racetrack every lap. With, with a fair amount more laps on tires. So they know they're going to have to go to work if they're going to beat Kyle tonight. That's for fifth. Mark Trux Jr. And being chased by Kyle Larson. Kozlowski with a half a second lead over Kyle Busch, then a second and a half back to Chase Elliott. Eric Jones, Trux Jr., Kyle Larson. All up in the top six. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. on the left side of your screen, running in the eighth position. Blaney ninth. Just behind them, Clint Boyer, Kurt Bush, and how about Denny Hamlin? Back up to the 12th position. And six seconds back from race leader Brad Kozlowski. All on the lead lap still. Ryan Newman, Bubba Wallace, Alex Bowman, Daniel Suarez, David Reagan, William Byron, Daniel Hemrick, Joey Logano. So 20 cars on the lead lap. And we heard Kyle Busch make the comment, we could have a long green flag run here. Could it spread out? And a big run for a few of these cars to stay on the lead lap, Keselowski trying to put guys a lap down. Could we get a long run? Yes. Is it going to spread out? No. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. mean, this is, look at it. I mean, it's just cars everywhere. And it's going to be like that all night. There's no way to escape. Look at this, Alex Bowman in the 88 with some issues. Oh, way up the racetrack, got free on corner entry. Contact, see right here, he enters really high and already loose. What a great battle, though, between Chase Elliott, Eric Jones, and Martin Truex Jr. Look at this, side by side. And Elliott's able to hold off Eric Jones, but Jones now getting aggressive. Marty. Rick, you guys talk about the possibility of a long run. That would be fine with Eric Jones. Many people felt in the garage area that in practice, Jones had the best long run car. When I talked to Chris Gale, his crew chief, he said, Eric feels like this is his best racetrack, and I agree. When you bring a young driver with confidence to a track, you know that means a lot, Rick. And he has a lot of confidence. Still trying to get to victory lane in 2019. Kyle Busch. We mentioned it restarting up front. Fans love it here at Bristol. Well, at least that one does.
You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Bristol. This telecast presented by Wendy's. And there's a gap between one and two. Brad Keselowski still leading here at Bristol. And Kyle Busch up to second. Yeah, and he has had quite the race. Remember the first car to go out qualifying that kind of forced him to have a poor lap started 31st what a lap down lap 78 and then the battle raged for lap after lap after lap with the 22 of Logano as well as Paul Menard he finally got the free pass on lap 198 now he's all the way up to the second position and for some updates let's go to Marty. How about the run for Ryan Newman and his race team? Hard to believe, Rick, that just a few weeks ago, they were below the cut line. Minus two out of the playoffs today, scoring stage points and running well right now. And remember how they've been able to finish races this year as well. Newman finished top ten here in the spring right now. Looking good playoff-wise, Kelly, plus 17. We've mentioned Bubba Wallace a couple of times doing a great job, easily staying on the lead lap. That in spite of having a car that he said just has the wrong setup. He wants a completely different package next time they come here. And he's been a little bit annoyed with how some of the lap traffic has been racing. And remember, he wants a little bit more respect. And one other thing, Dave, what is it like to pull a, a lap around Bristol? Bubba Wallace has said he's been holding his breath the whole time, has to remember to breathe. I was holding my breath watching Daniel Suarez with this view from the helmet cam trying to win the last stage. But he didn't overdo it. Kurt Busch won, probably had a better line to start with. Daniel didn't know what to do. Remember what he told us before the race started today? You've got to be smart and avoid the wreck. This is tight right here, Parker. And Dave, another driver has to be smart is William Byron back in 18th. That might not sound that impressive, but this is exactly what Chad Knauss' crew chief wanted to have today. He told me before the race, I just want to run all 500 laps, maybe get a top 15 finish, and come out here in a solid points position. Right now, he's 11, 82 points to the good in the playoffs. Look at the playoff points as they run. Again, right there, 15th, 16th, 17th. Very, very close. Just three points separating Clint Boyer and Daniel Suarez as they're running on the track. Again, it will only be two races after tonight to determine the field of 16 that will run for the championship. These three drivers, and actually four drivers, Kyle Larson just outside of your shot. There he is. They have been going at it, man. It, Matt, Matty D behind them. This has been a crazy race. They'll run the top, they're in the bottom, they keep switching about every lap, Marty. I mean, if you're sitting here at Bristol, Jeff, it's like, what battle do I watch? I mean, this one has been terrific with these four race cars. But Truex just said something very interesting, Jeff, a moment ago. He said, I have no front tires left. We're currently 49 laps into this run. We've seen a couple of right fronts let go here at Bristol so far today. So would that worry you? And would you maybe drive a little differently knowing front tires are kind of losing their feel right now? Yeah, you know, losing the feel is more just, you know, you. I wouldn't say it's really, really tight. If I got really tight, I'd be worried about the right front because I'd be feeling like I'd hurt that right front tire. But see Truex is riding along with him. Look at that moment. I mean, he drove in the corner. His hands were nice and straight. Felt like everything was great. And then all of a sudden, around the car goes. So, you know, you just heard him say, he's starting to not feel the front tires. Well, you're going to free it up with the car <laughs> sideways like that? I don't think so. You'll really be in trouble. In a great battle continuing between Elliott, Truex, Jones, and Larson. Parker. And guys, another Joe Gibbs car that might be struggling a little bit handling wise right now is the 18 of Kyle Bush. He's lost about a second to our leader, Kozlowski, there. And he just said it and came across radio and said, I'm starting to lose trust in the back again. Remember, this car was very loose early on this race. They went a lap down, they fought back, but he's starting to have it get a little loose right now, Marty. Parker teammate Eric Jones running, of course, the bottom right now, but a lot of spotters talking about how fast he is running that high line. And Jeff, when I mean he's running the high line, when Eric Jones commits to it, it's that. He is on the wall. You mentioned a moment ago, he is pushing the limits of that high line. All right, so here you go. What is he doing different? His corner entry, look how much racetracks he, he uses on corner entry. Very similar to Chase Elliott, but watch the exit. That time Chase Elliott ran the same exit. He moved it up. So the last 15, 20 laps, Eric Jones, look how high he is on the corner the exit of turn two. He just moved that exit up further than everybody else. Now, Chase Elliott, he got the message. He has changed his line and he's moved his exit up as well. What's the danger to do that? Okay? Here's the danger. If they get 
right here, if they get a foot higher, they're in the marbles. The track has full of tire buildup, and if you get out of that groove, you're going to make contact with the wall because you're going to lose grip. Well, you see Brad Kozlowski in the two right here behind the 51 dealing with traffic. Well, this was just a lap ago. The 21 up in front of him, contact with the front of Brad Kozlowski. I think it had, it would look like too much damage, but I'm sure that got his attention. Keslowski, race leader at Bristol as we go NASCAR nonstop. Just 172 laps to go. Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol Motor Speedway. I want to take a look at the Ram trucks built to serve. How many examples do you need? Don't ever give up. Kyle Busch running second. He's been a lap down. The 11's been laps down. He's up to ninth. Continue to battle back. Hit on the right yellow, Steve. Now we've seen already. If you if you have the right pit strategy, it can help you a great deal. The wrong pit strategy can set you back. And be aggressive late. I think you need to know who's racing for points. Who's out here stressed trying to make the push on them, lean on them. All right, so here, one name stands out. You see right there, 113 laps for Kyle Busch. Why does that matter? He has less fuel than everyone else. We talk about Bristol. The long runs can happen. Kyle Busch doing great, great pit strategy. 150, 155, maybe with some yellows, 160. Hoping for yellow in the next 40 laps or so. See, we showed Eric Jones a minute ago pushing that outside, and I said the danger is jumping over it. There you go. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. got his right sides a little bit too high. You can see all those marbles up against the wall. That's what happened to him trying to push that exit up. Contact with the wall cost him two positions. And Stenhouse Jr. now running in the 11th spot. Denny Hamlin was able to get by him, moved up to ninth. Blaney running in the 10th position. Keselowski has a half a second lead over Kyle Busch. Then it's Eric Jones, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Larson, all in the top five. So Jeff, help me on the fatigue. Eric Jones talked about it. There is the 20 right there. 74 laps, this green flag run here currently. Now we're later into the race, 334 complete. Are these drivers starting to feel some fatigue? Well, that's the thing. You've got this long run late in the race, right? So you already have the fatigue from, from being 
run so many laps. Now you get this long run late in the race, and yes, this place is physically demanding. Very difficult racetrack, Marty. Hey, and to add to that, Chris Gale just told him a moment ago, we're halfway on tires here. <laughs> They're halfway through that run, so 76 straight laps, and then you get on the radio, Jeff. Oh, you're just halfway through the run. You got 75 more to go. <laughs> I love Bristol. When you talk about the physical nature of this racetrack, we see drivers a lot of times take their hands off the wheel. Watch this. Watch Martin Truex Jr. just flexing his hand a little bit. Your hand's on that grip in the wheel so tight. Your hand actually will start to cramp up just a little bit. It was interesting to see his eyes, too, because he was looking right off the A post, almost up. It almost looked like he was looking up through the windshield because of the banking of this racetrack. Your hand actually can go numb. It's almost like uh, almost carpal tunnel, where your hand gets numb a little bit, and you got to just stretch your hand out. And up front, it's Brad Keselowski. We want to go through the field. We'll start with Kelly. And remember the hot start that Brad Keselowski got off to this season. Three wins, but now Kuti Paul Wolf says it has been a rough stretch through these summer months. And it's been a little bit frustrating for this two team. They're just looking to get some momentum back on their side. A win would certainly do that. One thing to note, they do see a little bit of damage on the front end of that, uh, of that two car, so they'll be ready to make a repair when they come to a pit road, Parker. Kelly, I spoke to Adam Stevens before the race today, and I asked him, you know, how cool is it to win here? How, many, how successful you guys have been? He said, it's awesome, but it sucks to lose here. We have found it every way to lose. They are hoping not to pit under green and find themselves left down and losing this race, Marty. Parker, as promised, Eric Jones so quick on this long run, trying to get to his teammate Kyle Busch and showing terrific discipline running the high line. This team has gained 57 points over the cut line in the last five races, having another solid one tonight, Dave. Chase Elliott, 33 laps led on the night, and the nine car still very good. Running that high line now, trying to hold off Larson. Larson's going to get him there with a tremendous run off the corner. Uh, the back end is swinging just a little bit for the nine driver, Marty. I asked Kyle Larson earlier, Dave, is it your favorite short track? He said, favorite short track? It's my favorite track, period. He's been playing with the brake bias, but saying that, you know what? The balance between the bottom and the top, much closer than it's been all night long. Martin Truex Jr., you saw him flex that hand a moment ago, saying he's having trouble feeling the front tires. Car's been a little bit tighter for Truex Jr., who's had 52 laps, having a nice run at Bristol. Traditionally, not one of his best racetracks, Parker. And Marty, what a great run for Matt DiBandetto. It's been highly publicized what happened this week. He will not be in this car next year. And, you know, I spoke to his crew chief, Mike Wheeler, and asked him what was Matt's mental state at the moment. He said, you know, during the week he was a little down, and I was worried about him. But when we got to this racetrack and we were really fast, you could see the pep in his step. He knew the opportunity in front of him, and he's taking hold, Marty. Parker, what did Mike Bugaravich say after that spin earlier? we got to go to work now. Boyer has answered the bell on that. They have been quick, mostly running the top and getting that high line to work for him. He's one of only three drivers to finish top ten in all three short track races this year, running there now, Kelly. It's been a good recover for Denny Hamlin. This 11 team, remember, they had damage early in the race, followed that up with a loose wheel. We're two laps down, have now worked their way back inside the top ten. They're trying to keep alive that streak of top five finishes. They've had five of them, including a win. The key, Chris Gamehart says, is the team's having fun, Dave. Still working on the 12 car, trying to make it a race winner for Ryan Blaney. Latest report was got the back end so far out of the track. We hear that a lot, guys. What does he mean by that? And a pass for the lead. Is it going to happen? No. Kyle Busch makes the run to the low side of the track. Can't get by Keselowski. But now the momentum back in the hands of the 18. Kyle Busch has been working the bottom of the racetrack. Brad Kozlowski's doing a nice job. Oh, he jumps the cushion. Just what you talked about, Jeff. A little too high in the middle of the corner. That may be enough. Will the 18 be able to get by him? Now the 18 with traffic in front of him. It's a, it's a race to these lap cars. They're not lap cars, but these cars are trying to lap. Who can get to them first? And then when they get to them, what are they going to be able to do? Kozlowski and Bush door to door as they continue to fight around Bristol, and now, as Keselowski gets loose, Bush up front. Keselowski struggling with his car on this long run. It's starting to go away. Well, we just heard Dave ask. He reported Blaney, the back of the car, out of the racetrack. It looks like his teammate, the two of Brad Keselowski, is having the same idea. That tells me he's loose. When the back of the car is out of the racetrack, he doesn't have grip. Oh, and Kyle Busch is going to get stuck behind a couple cars up top, and Brad's going to go back to the top. Oh, 18, he stood in the throw. Here comes Eric Jones. Eric Jones has been flying. Look how much ground he's made up. 
Kyle Busch had to hit the brakes hard so he wouldn't make contact and now Keselowski up front but here comes Eric Jones. Jones up to third now. The battle for the lead once again heating up. Straight to the inside. Straight back to the bottom of the racetrack for Kyle Busch. That's where he's been better than Keselowski. Back in front. The pass completed. Now Kyle Busch stays to the bottom. Sees William Byron running that higher line and that's where Keselowski has been running all night. So what can Eric Jones do? Eric Jones is, look, look how much higher he is on corner exit. Can he jump the outside of the two on exit? Let's listen to the 18 radio. Hey, just, if we get close to the green flag, pit stop for all of us. Give me a little advance notice, like, yeah, we're only like 50 laps away right now. We'll be the first one since we see. We got 25 laps left in the old. Yeah, yeah. Well, we talked about it, the 18 of Kyle Busch. This is how he got this track position. He stayed on the racetrack. But last time he was on pit road was lap 217. Look at the top of your screen. Lap 358. They could go 150, maybe 160 laps. So while the 18 is looking good and has the lead, he's going to need a yellow, Rick. Multiple laps you'll lose at Bristol if you pit under green. He's going to have to pit here pretty soon. So many things happening. You saw it all on NASCAR nonstop. The caution has come out, though, for Alex Bowman in the 88. You see, he drives into turn one. Everything's fine. And right there, you saw the sparks tire down. Then they just stack up behind him. Look at that. Tried to get it slowed down. Also, the 19 of Truex Jr. had an issue on the right side, which is so a tire went down for him. This is a right front. This is you're done winding. That's a, that's the tire. The tire is actually hold unwinding. On, you can on, hear that on, noise. Marty. And Jeff, remember what we had talked about? Truex saying he no longer had a feel of the front tire. Felt like they were going away way too quickly. Then the contact with the wall. They came down pit road, took on that right front. But you see that damage for Alex Bowman, Rick, and also Joey Logano. Yeah, Logano nowhere to go. Slammed into the back of the 88. So the interesting thing, the 88 had a left front down, yep. and the the you know Truex had a right front down. You know it's hard to say. You see so much damage around the car. You know was it a rub? Uh, we've seen beating and banging all night long, but guys, we can't stress enough how big of a break this was for the 18 of Kyle Busch. He had to have this yellow to get fuel in that 18 car, Marty. And you see the guys on the back stretch coming down pit road. Kyle Busch trailed by his teammate Eric Jones. 
Eric saying the car excellent there, but a little bit too tight towards the end of that run, so a small air pressure adjustment coming for him. Meanwhile, for Kyle Larson, who led 62 laps early in this race, he said, we're just giving up so much time early in the run with how free the car is. It's great at the end of the run, but they go down on the track bar trying to tighten it up in the early part, Parker. A great run continues for Matt Benedetto in that 95. Pitting out of sixth place, he's still a bit too loose. And then, Steve, you said it. What a big break for the 18 car of Kyle Busch. You could hear them on the radio how excited they were to have that caution, Kelly. The two for Brad Keselowski started off a little bit loose, but ended tight. They've got to put a patch on the nose of that car. There was damage from earlier contact with the 21. And this is building up to be a great finish at Bristol. We saw Kyle Busch and Eric Jones hold their position. But we've also seen hitting the wall, running into the back of other cars, a lot of beating and banging. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Perfect for race fans. Ace Hardware, the helpful place. And by Wendy's Spicy Nuggets. Wendy's, we got you. Rut, it seems as though you are hovering around the Mobile One Peacock pit box this entire race. You know what? I've been all over the place. I was just down to the end of pit road. I hustled down here, but I was wondering, you know, Steve, we know every racetrack is loud, but this is the loudest. I keep seeing a lot of teams use these whiteboards. How are people communicating differently here at Bristol? I like a good whiteboard, sticky notes. And then, you know, a great way to communicate, I used to have to have a whole box of Sharpies because, you know, when you can't get somebody's attention to handle the sticky note, just toss a Sharpie. You throw the Sharpie that at was the them. Best. That's the best. <laughs> Dale, we agree with my yeah. man Rutt. We miss you up here, buddy. We miss you, my friend. Heck yes. But thank you, by the way, for all the texts. We've been enjoying them this entire <laughs> race. Side by side, it is two Joe Gibbs racing cars. Kyle Busch, Eric Jones. Kozlowski with a really slow start on the inside. We talk about pit stops from here. Oh, look at all the smoke, smoke coming out of Larson. Yeah, left front. Fender rub on the 42. It looked like as he went down to the corner. We'll see if it continues. It does a tremendous hey, amount of smoke. The case. We got heavy left front smoke. Still inside the bumper. I see clear. the damage though. It's on the hot. It's on the top of the the fender. It looks like it's rubbing down on top of that left rear or left front tire. Here comes and now lead. battle for the lead. Here comes Eric Jones. Jones is going to pass Bush for the lead. Oh. And behind him the 40 or the 34. Of McDowell, you see heavy damage to the front of that car. He has made major contact with someone. 38 of David Reagan also involved. He stopped in the corner. You see damage to the left rear corner, and 
the right side of the 48. Why that damage may not look severe. You see that blue foam yes. right there? Required by NASCAR. NASCAR's going to have to see if it has enough foam in it. If it doesn't, they'll have to put foam in and put a patch on it. There's the foam right there. And, and the, jack, the, the, the jacking post just looks like it's tore out of it, too. How are they going to get the car jacked up? And look at the playoff points. Or the right now playoff standings. 30 points out of 16th for Jimmy Johnson. See right here. Oh! Blaney. He didn't even know Blaney was in it. He just goes absolutely straight up the racetrack. Yeah, no, he's 17. Yeah, look oh, at look all at the, the sparks. Yeah, the sparks are flying out of it. That's a major failure. I don't know if it's a tire down or it's many. It almost looks like a mechanical issue. See? Go there. Check up, check up, check up. Stay middle, stay middle, stay middle. Hell yeah. It's yeah. a highlight reel of this race. If it was a ticker tape, it looked like the receipt <laughs> at the grocery store. It had wow. every coupon on it. It'd be six miles long. I mean, it's had, low, something's low, happened low, to everyone. Come back up, come back up, come back up. Stenhouse Jr. was having a good run. Got just nowhere to go for him. Got no. shoved in a wall. Kelly. Kelly. So Denny Hamlin needed this caution because the last time they came down Pitt Road, they were not sure that they got all the lug nuts tight on the right rear wheel. So I heard uh, Chris Gabehart say they're going to call him down now while we got this caution so that they can tighten those and make sure they don't have another loose wheel like they had earlier in the race. The guys, Blaney called into his crew. He believed he had a right front tire go down on the 12. It went down quickly, Dave. I mean, all the sparks flying. The car just immediately fell. Lemon and Denny Hamlin. It's a team sport, but it has been a uh, it's been a rough night for the pit crew of the 11. This will be the second loose wheel of the night. And they're up on the wall. They will wait for the 11 to come down. And you're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol. This telecast presented by Wendy's. So excited to be here at the last great Coliseum. How about the history of Darlington? Yes, in two weeks, we'll be back. The Lady in Black, Darlington Raceway, for NASCAR Throwback Weekend, the Southern 500 on NBCSN. Southern 500. Marty, 
Hey Jeff, we wondered where that tire rub came from Kyle Larson as he drives through all that speedy drive. They're waiting for pit road to open. They will come down pit road and fix that. But we found where that came from. That's actually the rear tire carrier there of Eric Jones team. And right there, the contact doesn't look like very much, but it was enough to knock that left front fender in on top of the tire. That's where the damage came from. They are gonna come down pit road and fix it here with Kyle Larson. But crazy, all the stuff that's happening here at Bristol on the track and on pit road as well. There's contact. Now, Steve, could that fix itself? I mean, the, the movement of the wheel, could it push that fender back out because the tire pushed it in? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say no, um, but normally what happens is it gets so hot that it actually gets worse. It starts to shrink the sheet metal down onto the tire. I love this call. This is 121 laps to go. The 42 is plus 76 in the playoffs. You can't get caught up in the emotion. You go out there and you blow that tire, give up 30 points. You can make for a stressful two more weeks, Marty. Yeah, Chad Johnson did not hesitate at all. And what they actually are going to do, they said David Bryant, who's the car chief, he's going to go over and make sure that they fix that repair. I can see that that left front is wrinkled just a little bit, not too much, enough so they can get it fixed. There they go with the hammers, taking care of that, making sure that everything is good for Kyle Larson. I think they'll be fine. And they know, to your point, Steve, they've had one of the best cars tonight. They want to be able to be in contention to win, Kelly. And it sounds like they felt like they got three lug nuts secure. Weren't sure about the other two for Denny Hamlin. And it's the left rear, not the right rear. They told him not to slide his tires because they're just going to simply tighten them up, work a little bit more on that damage on the right side from earlier in the race. That's a lot of loose wheels for one team in an 11 car. One thing that made that decision a little easier for Larson, only 13 cars in the lead lap. Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol Motor Speedway. Only 118 laps to go. What an incredible crowd here tonight. So excited to let you know there are over 13,000 camping sites that are around this facility and all sold out. So an amazing crowd once again here at Bristol. Again, one of the most coveted tickets in all of NASCAR, the nice night race here. Rick, normally the population in Bristol is 26,000. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot higher on this night. Yes, it does. Well, Rick, we talked about it. It was going to be action packed and action filled and started right away. Troubles with the 22 of Joe Logano. Has to pit for a flat tire. Gets behind. And then an accident. The three of the 48 gets stacked up, catches the 11 of Denny Hamlin. They're now Favarola. Right after that, he had had problems earlier. That led to this wreck. Then Clint Boyer had trouble toward the end of the stage. Teammate Daniel Suarez sneaking by. Fortunate for SHR, they're in all the highlights for all the wrong reasons. Here's another SHR car, Kevin Harvick. Good car early, drops a jack. Transmission is broken. And then right here, right front tire down on Martin Truex Jr. into the wall. And then this. The most recent, see Ryan Blaney with the right front tire down. Forrest Stenhouse just 
crammed in the wall, nothing he can do. They all stack up behind him, and they just keep coming. The hits keep on happening. Playoff points have tightened up, if you can believe it. Newman doing a really nice job currently in the 10th position at plus 14, 10th on the racetrack, plus 14 in the standings. Suarez, one to the good, Boyer, one to the bad, and Jimmy Johnson, never in his career has he missed the NASCAR postseason. Never, seven championships, currently 31 points behind. I think I can see the American flag on the moon. <laughs> Rut. Rick, it was about this point last night in the race that I noticed a photographer in turn one that I have not seen before. It was actually Bubba Wallace who's down here taking pictures, getting kind of the groove of it, working out for his new camera. But I asked him when it was kind of quiet, I said, are you watching to see how people are getting into this turn? Are you trying to get some good photos for your friends? And he just laughed and said, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I don't know if it's that week of, of getting his new uh, tattoo that he's got his boss's name on his thigh now, just getting the hang of it. But it was really cool to see him take that time to be here to be a race fan and also shoot some good pictures with his camera. A lot of hobbies for Bubba Wallace. He also an avid drummer, loves to get behind the drums uh, and, of course, photography. Then, of course, the Richard Petty tattoo. Richard Petty signed his arm at Victory Junction uh, when they were there for the camp and he made the comment on social media if it gets retweeted 43,000 times he would actually have it tattooed on his body. Well it did over 43,000 retweets and now he has a permanent tattoo of Richard Petty. What a cool paint scheme U.S. Air Force. Yep Warthog the A-10 Warthog for the U.S. Air Force. And they're lining back up two by two. It's Eric Jones and Kyle Busch making up row one. Then Elliot De Benedetto. What a run for Matt De Benedetto, making the comment this week that he is not going to be coming back to Levine Family Racing in 2020. Our guys have done some great research. Watch the 12 and the 8 coming off the corner together. Right here, a little bit of contact. And then as he drives into turn one, tire down into the wall. Yeah, taking the 17 with him of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Eric Jones on the outside, Kyle Busch on the inside. Great restart for Jones. They're side by side for third, Elliott. And De Benedetto. De Benedetto making a run on the high side. De Benedetto taking second away from Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch had a moment in the corner. Had to really catch the car. Got very loose. Eric Jones first. Matty D second. The two drivers that have been in all the conversation about who's going to drive what car. And now De Benedetto chasing down or trying to chase down that 20 of Jones. Parker. And all that's been said about where Matt is going next year, he's unsure, but he told me, you know, my one objective is to win a race to prove that I deserve to be in a winning car. And that move right there was awesome and shows the talent that Matt DeBeno has and how much he wants to win. And Parker, meanwhile, for Eric Jones, the guy out front, the entire time, all this controversy and air quotes have been going on. He said, I'm not worried. I know what's happening next year. I'm not going to let it affect my racing. And sort of since all that talk began, look at the streak the 20 team has been on. Top five after top five. And here he is, possibly staring down his first win of 2019. We saw. Matty D make that big move on the outside. Well, here's why. Look at Kyle Busch, how loose he was on corner entry. I think it's important to remember that this is the first time that Kyle Busch and his team have taken off on new tires in the front of the pack. Did they really know what to expect? Were they able to make the right changes? Because they've been in the back of the pack all night long. You do not run as quick into the corner in the back versus you do in the front. Look at the 95 of Matt DiBenedetto. He has moved to the top of the racetrack in three and four. I thought Eric Jones was going to block. He did not. This time, he does. He goes to the top. But look how good this 95 is through the middle. He will turn underneath the 20 side by side into turn one. 
Matt De Benedetto. His wife Taylor right now is actually watching from the grandstands and she's cheering him on. De Benedetto to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to steal the lead away from Jones. Oh, he's inches away. He almost had him cleared. Couldn't quite pull up in front of him. Right now, he looks like he's got enough momentum. Clear. Oh, oh Jones, Jones into the wall. wall. Jones into the wall and now Elliott. Chase Elliott trying to avoid Matt De Benedetto. He came out in driver introductions with a robe on that said Italian Stallion. And now Matt De Benedetto leading at Bristol. You see right there the 20 of Eric Jones got very loose, made contact. That was heavy contact, wasn't it, Steve? Yeah, that is a lot of damage to the right rear corner of the 20 car. 20's on pit road. Matt De Benedetto trying to pull away from Elliott. Marty. And Ricky said, I've got to come in. You see that heavy right side damage, right rear damage as well for the 20 car. One of the best cars. Jeff, you talked about it, pushing it on the high line, and he made contact with the wall. Very heavy damage on that 20 car. Huge damage. Just pushing a little too hard. Still 100 laps to go. But that's Bristol, right? You have to push it. You have to find your limit. Steve, you and I are looking at each other, and I'm almost about ready to laugh because I remember sitting earlier today talking with Dale Jarrett, and Dale Jarrett said, you know what? Wouldn't it be amazing if Matt Benedetto could come out and win this race? Like, like what does the guy have to do? <laughs> right. What does he have to do to get a ride, to stick in a ride? I'm not disagreeing with the decision the 95 made. I understand it's very complicated. I don't question that car. I question all the other cars in the garage here. I could give you a list of drivers that should be scared to death of Matty D because he deserves their seats. He is outperforming them week in and week out at the toughest racetracks, at the road courses, at the high banks of Bristol. When it comes down to driver, and driver's racetrack, Matty D finds a way to help this 95 get to the front. And Steve, think of who he just passed. That was a Joe Gibbs car and Eric Jones. And that car, the 95, is a generation older Joe Gibbs car. That is not the exact same equipment as Joe Gibbs Racing. Their affiliation isn't that close, as crew chief Mike Fleur told me. So it just adds in the effect, what does this guy have to do to get one of those top rides? He's beating them with older equipment. So, so listen. We talk a lot about Matt De Benedetto on this team. What about Wills? What about Mike Willard? Remember, he was with he was with Denny Hamlin yeah. last year. No, I don't think you're good enough to get this done. So he went over there, and now he has Matty D in front of this pack. We talked about it being a fight. Well, a fighter's out front right now.
And make sure to stay tuned for post race coverage on NBCSN from Bristol Motor Speedway. Then after the post race show, stick around for Mecham Auctions from Monterey, California. What a party it will be, really, for anyone who ends up winning this race. It's such a difficult race to win, and there's so much prestige behind it, winning at Bristol. And right now, a great fight going on for the second position. Kozlowski in third, Chase Elliott in second. Chase Elliott's doing a nice job, not only working through traffic, his car seems to work very good top or bottom of the racetrack. I think that's helping the nine as they catch traffic. He seems to gap the two of Brad Kozlowski. I think that's really kind of the goal, right? Get through traffic better than the leader, Matt DiBenedetto in the 95. And look at this, Matt DiBenedetto going by the 20 of Eric Jones, who had an issue just after Matt had passed him. Let's listen into the 95 radio. Oh, make something quick tonight. Make the most of it. Next year all night. Get them all tight all night. Got a good shot, obviously. Let's make the most of it. Okay. Four, sounds good. All I got for you guys. Let's go uh, kick some ass. Of course, that was at the beginning, before the race even started. Steve, what now, as a crew chief, do you say to Matt DiBenedetto, who's looking 79 laps away from maybe his first ever win? Nothing. Uh, I'm off the radio. This is driver and spotter. Action's too quick, too much traffic. I trust my race car driver, and staying off the radio will prove it. I'll count down the laps as I always would. At this point, probably 75 to go, then a 50 to go, maybe 25 and 5 on down from there. But I think at this point, you've done the work. Matty D has shown he belongs up here. I think silence says more than anything you could say on the radio. I want you to I want to treat this race with 78 to go the same way we treated it with 20 to go. I want it with 200 to go, with 400 to go. Like, it, it's, we're still at the race, right? Just do your deal. If you start doing something different right now, that's not in your best interest. Trust the driver. Let him go do what he needs to do. Now. If you have a driver you can't trust, then you got to walk you through it a little bit. But you can trust this one. You can trust it, but that's all fine, Jeff. But let's be clear. He has never, ever been in this position in this type of race. And what I mean by that is traffic. I, I don't, I'm not talking, he could drive. I don't question his speed, but the decisions in and out of traffic, top, bottom, how he moves through traffic, because Chase Elliott is right there. He's not on his bumper to pass him, but a mistake, and Chase Elliott will pounce. So, I, I, listen, he could make a mistake and pick the wrong line in traffic, but so could Kyle Busch. Yeah. So could a guy that's won many championships. I want to. I believe that as a driver with 74 to go, trying to win my first Cup race, I'd rather have chaos. I'd rather have all this stuff going on because it helps me focus. What am I thinking about? I'm thinking about everything that's around me. I think that actually makes the situation a little more easy. And Wills, his crew chief, we just talked about it. He's been here before. Yeah. He's won cup races. It's not his, not the first time he's been here. Looks pretty comfy right there. <laughs> pretty intense. I mean, pretty relaxed. Pretty actually. chatty guy right yeah. now, isn't he, Rick? I mean, there's been so much conversation about Matt, and rightfully so. Sure. But Wills has done a great job of going to this team, right? He left Joe Gibbs racing, this juggernaut. He left them and went here and has helped build this team to what it is today so they can be here. You want to know some other drivers that really care how this race finishes? This 95 car wins the race. He's in. He's in the playoffs. I mean, look at this. He's leading the race, so we have him in currently right there. Boom. That knocks out Suarez and Clint Boyer yeah. and puts the six of Ryan Newman barely in. You want to talk about the heat being turned up at the cut line? This win right here would be huge, Parker. And Steve, as Jeff, you were just talking about the great job that Mike Wheeler is doing. I, when I talked to him, when I asked him that exact question about going to this smaller team, and he said, when I walked in the shop in December, there wasn't a car there. And he said, you know, the reason it's taken us so long to maybe get our performance up is just the simple processes that you need to set up within a race team that just were not there that I knew from Joe Gibbs Racing. But remember, this is a bit of redemption for him, too, to kind of prove that he can go there and take this smaller team and do what they're doing right now after getting let go from that juggernaut at Joe Gibbs Racing, or at least the move from that 11 car. And Parker, the reason that we've said coming into this race that Matt DiBenedetto, we've talked a lot about him, he's had success at this racetrack. This is where he got his first top 10 finish. Back in 2016, he finished sixth, was so emotional, said, you know what, for me and this team, it's like a win. Finishing sixth at Bristol against this competition, I feel like we won the race. Well, he might get a chance to feel like what winning really feels like. 
Just a quick update so everybody understands. These leaders were all on pit road lap 366, so fuel shouldn't be an issue. If this lap race goes green, the last 65 laps, these drivers should be able to do it. We have seen some tires issues on uh, some different guys over the course of the race, so I don't know if, you know, everyone can make it all the way to the finish, but we're going to have to see. So let's don't count him out. No. All right, so Denny Hamlin has had a crazy night, right? Up, down, loose wheels. Here he is in fourth. And by the way, when he's running fourth and clean, traffic, clean racetrack, Denny Hamlin has fast car on a racetrack. So still with 63 to go, he can go run Matty D down. He's not that far away to go get running down. We don't know who's going to have the best car at the end of this long run. And we've seen at Bristol many times late in a run, the gap can close very quickly. Denny Hamlin is running them down. Longest green flag run today. Tonight has been 104 laps. There's 62 laps to go. We're currently 52 laps into this one, so that's 113 laps. It would be the longest green flag run. It would be. We've talked a lot about the 95 leading the race. Some other guys that have had a hectic night but doing a nice job. The 41 of Daniel Suarez currently in ninth position. 439 laps around Bristol. He's on the lead lap right behind Suarez is Blaney somehow still on the lead lap after that big accident. And how about Newman back there in 11th, Hemrick in 12th? Some names having some great runs here at the Bristol Night Race. Darrell Wallace in 14th. Hey, man, 60 to go, 59 to go. These guys have been taxed. They've been pushed to the limit. We talk about making mistakes in traffic. Some of that's emotional. You're exhausted right now. This is a long, long night. You have, this is when you have to be the sharpest. You cannot let the entire be an excuse of having making a mistake. What a transition it has been. It's the night race at Bristol. And of course, starts around 7.30, so there's daylight. And what a transformation it has been here at Bristol, and what a transformation it will be for a career if Matt DiBenedetto can stay out front.
forty six laps to go at Bristol. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing. This telecast presented by Wendy's and Denny Hamlin. You guys have talked about him. He's been on the move. He's already up to second now. He was able to get by Keslowski and Chase Elliott. You saw that in NASCAR nonstop. Now, 1.5 seconds behind Matt DiBenedetto. He is going to be, with this much time left, he's going to have to clear, going to have to clear Hemrick pretty quickly. Matty D's been able to get by Hemrick, been able to get by Bubba Wallace. Two lap cars in front of that. Denny Hamlin's going to have to actually clear them quicker as these laps wind down. 44 laps to go. De Benedetto in front of Denny Hamlin. And way up against the wall was Hamlin. We talked about that cushion and running as high as these cars are running, and they just could slip over. And we saw the 11 get awfully close to running into the wall there. Here you go. Here's the shot. That's the ground he has to make up. He was able to get by Keslowski and Chase relatively quickly, but now he's had trouble getting through lap traffic. And remember how difficult it is. We just saw Ryan Newman in front of Matt DiBenedetto. He's normally one of the hardest guys to get by on a racetrack. Look at this move. A 47 of Priest. He had a huge moment on the exit there. Almost spun out in front of Hamlin. Oh, look at this right here. Newman, oh, he doesn't he want to give up the spot. And that cost the 95 a ton of time right there. Five, six car lengths given up to the 11, and Newman's still on his outside. Look at this. Oh, a little contact even. Yeah, did it damage that left front tire? It's clear. You see, though, that white number 11. Yes. The left front of the 95 bent in. Will it affect that left front tire? How much ground did the, that help the 11? And now the 95 has some clean air in front of him. He needs to get going because the 11 only has him and the six of Newen between him and Matty D. There he is. There's Denny Hamlin. You mentioned it. It's helped eight, him gain a lot of ground. Eight tenths of a second separate the top two. Now, how difficult will it be for Newman? Well, Newman doesn't have to hold off Denny Hamlin, but he's going to try because Ryan Newman doesn't like to let anyone buy him. And that lap in clean air, Hamlin was faster than the 95. Reasonably same position on the racetrack. 36 laps to go. Now 35. Can Hamlin get by Newman? He's on his back bumper. He had a big run right there, but he just couldn't turn left because that 27 car was was there. Now he's to the outside of the six. Can he clear him as he goes into the corner? All right, this is the first time on corner exit. When the 95 looks in his mirror, he's only going to see the 11. No more lap cars, no more protection. 15 car lengths, 34 laps between here and Matt's first win at the cup level. And both have clean air, so now we get a really good idea where they are on speed. That lap, Hamlin a tenth and a half quicker than Matty D. And you mentioned the cushion. Look how high the 11 is. He's using every inch of available concrete. One thing I like about that, another tenth and a half. The one thing I like about that, as this run gets longer and longer, I think that's going to even become better. I think that's going to help the 11 car. See how high he is? He's not turning the wheel of his car as much, and this is not helping Matty D, even if it's not tire damage. That is down for us, and say what you want. On this racetrack, it's fast. A, la a loss of any loss of downforce can hurt you. So, Steve, 14 laps. Pressure tires for Denny Hamlin. Is that helping him at all? I don't know. We haven't seen tires matter a whole lot. I mean, pressure's better. I'm not going to say it's hurting. But uh, we just saw the 11. You know, he was great early, had issues, got behind. Seems like they have worked on their car, adjusted their car, and now he's finally back up to the front. This is where I think the 11's so good. He can go to the bottom of the racetrack and look how fast he is through the middle. I think that's a big difference through traffic. We said it when we, this race started. Traffic would play a role, and it's going to. Who can clear the traffic right there? You saw Matt try to turn underneath Austin Dillon, and it hurt him. The 11 car, look at the gain, look at the gain he made. 
Now the 11's got to hope the three stays on the bottom so he can use that outside lane. That's exactly what he wanted. Matt did nothing wrong, right? That was just the timing of where the three was. 27 laps to go. Denny Hamlin, you could say this could possibly be his best year ever as he's reeling in Matt DiBenedetto. Hamlin started off the season winning the Daytona 500. It was his second one. He's already had a hole in one. He loves golf. One of his most passionate things to do as a hobby. And he's won at Texas and Pocono and starting to heat back up again as we're getting close to the playoffs. Kelly. We talk about this incredible run that Denny Hamlin's been on. I talked to both his crew chief Chris Gabehart and his longtime spotter Chris uh, Lambert. And he told me this is uncharted territory for Denny. He said it's the best I've seen him in eight years. He switched in, he's plugged in, off track, on, on, off and on track. And he said, from the minute we plug in the radio for first practice of a weekend, I can hear it in his voice that he's ready to go. How about the lane changes? So Matt has gone to the bottom of the racetrack. When he went to the bottom, I thought, what are you doing? Well, when he did it, he actually picked up a little bit of time. Denny Hamlin's still running that top. Now Matt's going back to the top. And a lot of lap traffic in front of Matt Benedetto now. He's got to work his way through this cleanly. I have no doubt the 11 will get close to the 95. The question's going to come, and it comes at all of these short tracks. What are you willing to do? What is the 95 willing to do to win his first race? If the 11 does get there, it's a big gap behind the 11. Four seconds. I think these two, without a caution, they're going to fight it out between the two of them. Well, if the 11 does get there, that makes the decision-making process of how do you get by slower cars that much more difficult, right? So right now, if Matty D makes a little bit of a bad choice, the 11 is not right there. Can't really take advantage to get by him. But as the 11 gets closer, and if he gets to that rear bumper, the pressure ramps up quickly, Parker. And guys, Rick, you mentioned how his wife Taylor's in the stands. Well, his best friend Ryan Ellis just tweeted that he was actually texting Taylor and asked her how she's doing. And all she uh, texted back was, I'm crying. You have to imagine emotions are high right now, coming in that 18 to go. Even if he's not able to hold up Denny Hamlin, this is showing the rest of the NASCAR garage. Matt DiBenedetto can run up front. And now, DiBenedetto to the bottom of the racetrack. Oh. Here comes the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Will the momentum work for him here? DiBenedetto up in front of him, blocking him. And now he takes his line away. The 95 has to be very careful. I know he might think his car is better on the bottom, but I don't think you can give the 11 the top at this end of the racetrack. He doesn't. He goes up and takes the line away. Like you said, what will they do? What will Denny Hamlin do? Will he put the bumper to the 95 to move him out of the way? 17, now 16 laps to go. Will, oh, look how much better he was in the middle of the corner right there. Also, will Denny Hamlin change his line? Will he go to the bottom? He I'd have to yet. give it a shot, right? I'd have to go run the bottom one time and see what it gives me. To Benedetto, trying to stay in front of this 11. Under 15 laps to go now. Right now, we know the strength. The strength of the 11 car is on that end of the racetrack. See right here? Matty D is able to turn down. They're pretty equal over there. But on this end of the racetrack, there he goes. Denny Hamlin going to the bottom. Well, the 11 gets up next to the 95, but he won't be able to complete as they start and catch traffic. They were battling in clean air, but here you go. Traffic. Look at this. Denny Hamlin behind the 52. That's going to slow him down just a bit. Matt Benedetto. now. 13 laps to go. Next up, making lap time. Maintained by one and a half. Well, we don't get here. De Benedetto's story. He moved over to the 95. Said, give me a chance. I'm betting on the fact that I can win races. Here comes the 11. Now they're side by side for the lead. A little contact. The 11 made that move because of this. He believes he can get there and maybe catch him, use the 12 of Blaney as a pick. Denny Hamlin now has the advantage. He's in front. Hamlin in front in Bristol. Now all the pressure switches. It now switches to Hamlin. Now he's got to be perfect in traffic. He has the better car. Trying to get by that 12 of Blaney. Remember, it's the 20th anniversary of rattle his cage well what will De Benedetto do can he get back to the back bumper of the 11 true X got completely out of the way under 10 laps to go 
Oh, this could be a shot for the 95, the 48 up the racetrack. He gets out of the 11's way. Gets out of everyone's way. The next car they're going to catch is the one car, Kurt Busch. He is in the lead lap. The last car on the lead lap in ninth. And what will Kurt do? He's been in this position before. Will he allow the 11 to go by? It looks like he will. Classy move by a veteran to not get in the race for the lead. Very much so. Under seven to go. How about this fight from Denny Hamlin and his team tonight? I'm telling you, 34 career wins. He, something about him. I don't know what it is. One shot to win a championship. He had a chance. Went heads up with Jimmy Johnson. It wasn't his way. But look at the perseverance of his day. He leads right away. 67 of first, 83 laps. Has a little damage. Pits under green. Goes two laps down. Gets a wave around. Then the free pass. Pits again at lap 380 for a loose wheel. He has come through the field time and time again. All the reports, everything we've seen, this could be his fourth win of the season. And we talked earlier about Kevin Harvick being the one heating up just before the playoffs. What about this team? This oh, yeah. team, man, they have been on a roll. Still work to be done. This race is not over. Still have to get through this traffic. And I'm going to say the 95, I questioned if he could get through the traffic. He did it. It ended up being a better car with the 11. Matt did a wonderful job. I didn't see him put his car in a bad position. The 11, I think, is just better. Matt made no mistakes there. Just the 11 car is just a little quicker. Matt's done his job. Coming up on a mile to go. One mile to race at Bristol. Denny Hamlin has fought valiantly against the Italian Stallion tonight in Matt De Benedetto. Will there be one last push to try to catch up to that 11? A lot of traffic as they come up on one lap to go. And very tight for Denny Hamlin. The checkered flag will fly. Hamlin wins at Bristol. High fives all around. What a performance by Denny Hamlin and the 11 team. Proud of this race, team. God, you. The almost Cinderella story of Matt DiBenedetto coming home in second. Career best finish for Matt DiBenedetto. Kozlowski finishing in third. Kyle Busch was fourth. Chase Elliott fifth. Denny Hamlin wins in the Monster Energy Cup Series for the fourth time this season. When you talk about championship leaders, as we're closing in on the playoffs. Denny Hamlin has to be at the top of the list. This victory fueled by Sunoco. Fuel your best. to the wall. <laughs> Climbs out a fight to the end. Congratulations, you have picked up your fourth win of the season here at Bristol. I'm so sorry to Matt DiBenedetto, Mike Wheeler. Uh, 
I hate it. I mean, I know I know a win would mean uh, a lot to that team, but uh, I got to give it 110% for FedEx and my whole team. And uh, uh, just sorry, uh, but uh, proud of this whole FedEx team for uh, giving me a great car. The pit crew, my crew chief, uh, just everybody just doing an amazing job. Uh, Jordan, all the girls at home. Uh, just the whole team is just doing an amazing job right now. They're, they're just kicking ass. Man, it was a tough night, a lot of bumping and banging. You guys had your own setbacks, but you never gave up. You put on a show for these fans. How did you chase Matt down there at the end? You know, the between my spotter and the and the, and the uh, crew chief, it just stayed on me to not get anxious and just kind of take my time. I had plenty of time, and I just worked him over, worked him over, and I knew I didn't want to show him the bottom until I knew I could make the pass. And I ran the top, ran the top, ran the top, got the position on the bottom and finished it. So uh, we had a great car that could move around and came back from a couple laps down and here we are. What do you want to say to these fans tonight? You guys rock. Thank you. There's your winner, Denny Hamlin. Parker? And Rutledge, Matt DiBenedetto finishes second lead, 93 laps. I know the emotions, everything coming this week. What's going through your head right now? Uh, I don't know <laughs> so much. I wanted to win so bad for these guys, for this team, for them giving me this opportunity. Uh, uh, I'm just thankful that they gave me this opportunity. Toyota, uh, Procore, Dumont Jets, and Esti Wada, Spree Equipment, that's all. I'm so thankful, but man, I am, I'm sad. We got tight after the deal with Newman when he came up into us, and it all of a sudden it got really tight after that. But uh, Dude, congrats to Denny. He raced hard. He's I, I've been a fan of his since I was a kid. To be racing door to door with him at Bristol, and in front of a great group of fans. I, I'm try, try not to get emotional, but it's been a, it's been a tough week, and um, I just want to stick around and keep doing this for a long time to come. I, I love it. I love the opportunity, and I, uh, I'm not done yet. Something will come open. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. I'm, I'm here to win. Something's gonna co come open. I'm proud of these guys. Thankful for my wife and fans for sticking with me. It's been a tough journey. It's been a, a hard week, and this is, uh, this is cool for this team. Obviously, very emotional, Matt Benedetto. That second place, guys. He is literally fighting for his livelihood. Fighting for his life. He has a passion for racing. He has a. He believe. Look at, look at that emotion i mean he feels like he had a shot to win tonight and he did and and you know you said it steve this guy he will be driving next year there's no way if you own a cup team that you can't look and say this guy is an upgrade this guy can bring an emotion an ability a spirit to my race team that will bring my not race team up a notch and let me say this there's too, there's so much talent around Joe Gibbs racing right now, right? So, unfortunately, you know, he's going to lose his opportunity here because of the amount of talent that is at Joe Gibbs racing. But there is a place for this guy, and he can put your car in the front. If you need a driver and you're not calling him, it's a mistake. Forget on the racetrack. I mean, he just proved it to us on the race. But, but how about that interview? Yeah. He gets run into or runs into, however you want to look at it, with Ryan Newman. Doesn't say a cross word. Yeah. Tells us the facts that his car got tight after the damage to the fender. With everything on this guy's mind, his career on the line, he handles it at that much of a class act. I think that's what I see most about Matty D. It's not just on the racetrack. It's every time that he's in an interview, he says all the right things. What a day it was for Denny Hamlin. Got into the side of the 48. They had to come to pit road fix the damage. Then the battle between he and Matt DiBenedetto. He was able to clear him and go on and get the win. His fourth of the season, his second ever here at Bristol. Denny Hamlin celebrating. And on the opposite end, the agony of defeat. Matt DiBenedetto finishing in second. And the emotion there. What a valiant effort.
Coke any moment. Denny Hamlin has made it into victory lane at Bristol Motor Speedway and celebrating with his team. I want to take a look at the Coca Cola winning moments. And it's the pass for the lead. Look at this a little bit of rubbing. But again, rubbing is racing, and we saw it. Denny Hamlin, he said he felt bad about passing Matt Benedetto, but he's a racer first, and he wants to get to victory lane. He knows what kind of a season it has already been for him. Uh, his fourth win already of the season, second win here at Bristol, and he had to fight for this one. This was one where when you come to Bristol, you know it's going to be a dogfight, and it ended up being a big fight for Denny Hamlin to get up there to get the win. This, this is a kind of a battle that can rally a team big time. Like, we overcame so much, and we won this race. We went and took it from them. And, yes, Denny Hamlin felt bad for Matty D, but you know what? He felt bad after the fact, right? Yeah, you, yeah. This is competition, man. You're going to go take that win if you have an opportunity. And that was just – that was a great drive and a great battle by the 11 team and Denny Hamlin. The campgrounds are full and the stands are filling up because of that action, because Denny Hamlin felt bad, but he raced for himself, his team, his organization. It was a great drive. You mentioned it. I actually thought the wheels were coming off the 11. Literally, two loose wheels. With all the momentum, with the fast cars they've had, the races they've won, I thought, man, he had that look all weekend. I got a great car. We sat on the pole. We can do it. We can do it. If it came down to a couple loose wheels that kept him out of victory lane, you wondered what damage would be done. Now, completely flipping. That pass for the 95 going to victory lane, I know they still have work to do, clean up the pit stops, but momentum is completely on the side of the 11. You said completely flip it. A year ago, 2018, the 11 team and Denny Hamlin go winless. And now they come out in 2019 and looking like the favorite for the championship as we go to Krista, Kyle, and DJ. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.